day and the Lord's Sabbath day. Yes, sir. The Lord has given us a day because the Sabbath day was made for man, not man for the Sabbath day. But the Sabbath day, the Lord made the Sabbath day, especially with you and me in mind. Not only so that we should give him some praise, but we should rest at the same time. Because he knows, the Lord knows, if he, if he didn't give us a day to rest, we would not rest. We'd be, we'd be thinking more about money and our financial situation than serving the Lord. And that's what's going on out here right now, sisters and brothers. If people are more concerned about their financial situation than giving the Lord some time. So that's not even the title of my lesson, you know, so be patient with me. Like, like Paul say, bear with me a little bit in my folly. So, sisters and brothers, I'm Brother Will, first of all, from Chicago. And uh, it's my first time down here. Praise the Lord, right? And today my reader is my, my, my road reader, who reads for me on, when I travel, Brother Steve. And it just so happens, he's down here too. Right. So <laughs> I asked Brother Troy to just do me a favor and let Brother Steve read. So the title of today's lesson, sisters and brothers, is How Should We Walk Keeping It 100? How Should We Walk Keeping It 100? And you say, Brother Will, you can't say keep it in 100 like that. You know, because, hey, we don't talk like that in the church, but we talk like that today. Because keeping it 100 is being real with yourself, examining yourself. Yes, sir. Whether you really are walking this walk that you claim you're walking. See, we, we profess with our mouths and our, that we love the Lord, but right. our hearts are far from him. Right. Teaching the commandments of men. Ain't that what the book say? Yes, sir. That's why the majority is holding class on Sunday. And we hold a very elect few. That's why the Lord called us the elect. The elect. The elect few are holding class on the Sabbath day, the day that the Lord commanded us to hold class. But they tomorrow they're going to be professing with their mouth that they love the Lord. Oh, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. But their hearts are far from them because they teach in doctrine of vanity, of vanity, only concerned about financial, monastery, money. How can we make more money? Right. The books say merchandise they made of you. Mm -hmm. They made merchandise of us, sisters mm -hmm. and brothers. All through slavery, they made merchandise of us. All so they can make a gain. They didn't really had no concern about teaching the word of the Lord. But in this place, we're going to teach the word of the Lord. We're going to do what thus saith the Lord yes, we are. today. If we don't do nothing else, we're going to learn how to please our God. Mm -hmm. So the title of the lesson, How Should We Walk Keeping It 100? Just being real with ourselves. And this lesson, you know, like I tell everybody, sometimes I put the, my, together my lessons for vanity because I see myself in all my lessons. So when I put together my lessons, it's about what Brother Will needs to change, what Brother Will needs to do. So... By me talking to myself, I'm, always, I'm also talking to you guys. Teach, but when I look in the mirror, I say, what things does Brother Will need to change to become a better Christian? Christ-like, right? Come on. What things, did, what afflictions was Brother Will in that the Lord brought him out of so I could be a testimony to you guys? Yes, sir. And always the Lord, that spirit come and give me a, give me a lesson. Uh -huh. He say, man, how should you walk? How should you really walk, Brother Will, to please me? And I said, you know what? I was talking to myself. Because we all talk to ourselves, just don't answer too much now. <laughs> but I say, self, what things do I need to change to serve the Lord better? Because I always pray. I say, Lord, break the chains off me so I can come forth and, and praise you. Yes. Praise you. Yes. I just want to serve you, but you got to break these chains off me. Because we all are in bondage to sin, sisters and brothers. Yes, but only the Lord can break those chains off you. And if you pray with a whole heart, I'm telling you, you tell the Lord, really, Break these chains off me because something's holding me down. I want to come forth and be a better servant to you. He will do it. Yes, he Won't will. he do it? Yes, he will. Ain't that what they say? <laughs> Won't he do it? <laughs> we're going to have fun, though. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a good time. But with all we get, we're going to get some understanding. Yeah. We're all out doing. We're going to get some understanding here today. So we're going to open up your books and get your pen and paper out. And I want you to take a couple of notes. And you might even want to bring a, a mirror out to a person so you can really look at yourself. Hmm. Teach or look at, look, at your, look at your phone and say, look at, just look at yourself, because when you get through with this, you're going to really have to examine yourself. And you're going to say, man, maybe I've, been in a, maybe I've been perpetrating this whole time. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've been faking a covenant that I'm with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? Maybe some of us here uh, are fake to ourselves. But if you're going to be real to anybody, be real to yourself. Come on. Because you can, you can be fake to brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You can be fake to your family, mm -hmm. husband and wife, but you can't be fake to yourself. When you look in the mirror, you say, you know, Brother Will, we got some problems. Yeah. We got some real problems. And Paul say, lest we be reprobate. 
And we ain't trying to go down that path. We are not trying to be reprobate, no, sisters and brothers. Reprobate means when you are justifying your wickedness. Mm -hmm. But at the same time you justifying your wickedness, you are departing from the truth. Mm -hmm. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Yes, sir. And the Lord darkened their evil hearts. Because you trying to justify all the things you're doing and saying, you know what, Lord? I'm not really doing bad. But you are. Mm -hmm. But you're trying to justify it. You know, I could just... Maybe lay my hand on the sister. I don't got to go all the way with the sister. Just lay my hand on it. That's, not, that's not adultery. Teach well. Trying to justify yourself, professing yourself to be wiser than your creator. You became fools. And he said he darkened your evil hearts. They said because when they knew God, they glorified him not yeah. as God. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? Because these people even on Sunday, they know God. He said because God has showed him himself. They know the law. They know the testimony. They know the book from Genesis. Let me tell you, I go to them Sunday church and I'll be talking to them preachers. They can quote more scriptures than I can. Yeah. I'll be looking, saying, I'll be, I'll be had looking like Brother Will. Is that in the book? Right. I, I had to go to Google. That is and right. I say, boy, they know that. That is right. But, but, with all the knowledge, the books say they are forever learning, but they can't come to the truth. Come on, Will. They forever learning. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking, I say, oh, we need to change yes. so we don't be in the same situation they in. Because yes. the Lord would darken our, our hearts too. And next thing you know, you, you be de departed from the truth. Because the book said in the last day, many shall depart. Yes, it does. Many shall walk away from this truth. And Paul said, once you, once you have tasted the goodness of this truth and you have walked away, you cannot come back. Sweeter than honey. You cannot sit here, sisters and brothers, and learn this truth. Mm -hmm. And you go on a wonder off into these lost books and Egyptology and all this stuff. And think that the Lord is going to allow you to come back because he showed you himself. That's what I tell everybody. When, Egypt came, when, when Israel came out of Egypt, sisters and brothers, it was what? A mixed multitude, multitude, right? Yes, sir. A mixed multitude. And this is how crazy Israel is. And I'm just talking just to get you into the lesson. Just to get, to, get you to understand where we are going with this. When the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude. You had Egyptians. You had Israel. You had Ishmael, mm -hmm. you had Esau, you had all those people. And the reason they came out with us because they believed in our God. Yes, sir. And they believed in the power of our God mm -hmm. because it was magnified to them. They had shown to them that, hey, this is the guy that got real power. But the scripture always comes to mind and says, Israel, you taught the wicked ones they way. Mm -hmm. You taught them. When they came out, they knew the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes, they did. But they came out with a little of their gods with them, mm -hmm. the Egypt, the Egyptology, the Ishmael had their God, this served the five, the, the five point star and the crescent moon, you know, that God. There's no God at all. But Israel, because this is how we do it. You can look at our community right now. They show us one thing, we better it. Yeah. We do it better than they did it. We do it better than they did. They all they gotta do is just bring us something. Hey, this is the this is the new trend in style. Next thing you know, Israel full force into it. Mm -hmm. So they they showed us a little bit about, our, about their God, and we went full force into it. Egyptology. Yeah, we were full force into Christianity, not the Christianity of the Bible, but the Sunday worship. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord say he showed them, he showed us himself about this, y'all. So we're going to pick this up because we got to go so I can get y'all out of here before sundown. Because, Lord, <laughs> you know, as Brother Julius was bringing me in the van, I was saying to myself, I said, I ain't going to talk a lot today, but I ain't going to sit here and bear false witness either. So, <laughs> Brother Will, Lord knows I can talk. Because he gave me this mouth, and I'm going to use it. Romans 8 chapter, y'all. Pick it up in Romans 8 chapter. Romans 8 chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans 8 chapter and verse 1. Now, if I talk to y'all and I ask y'all some questions, just yell it out. That's how I do. Just my style. If I say, is it like that? You say, yeah, all right? Just, just a little style. I try to interact with you guys so y'all don't fall asleep because y'all follow, follow, fall asleep and I got to start all over again. <laughs> I'm just being real. Let us be real with each other. Let us reason. Romans 8, chapter, pick it up in verse 1. Go ahead, brother. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So when you're in Christ Jesus, there is no way you can be condemned. When you walk in, when you really walk in Christ Jesus, that's where condemnation comes from, the root word, condemn. No one can point their finger at you and say, this is a, a wicked brother, this is brother the evil. Because there is no condemnation. And you cannot be condemned as long as you walk in Christ Jesus. 
Go ahead, brother. Who walk not after the flesh. Who walk not after the what? After the flesh. See, that's the problem. In this world right now, everybody's walking strictly after the flesh. And they have no regards to the work of the Lord. He said, even the ox know his master and the ass his master's house. But my people don't even regard, my people in Israel don't even regard what I've done for them. Neither do they consider what the Lord has done for us, sisters and brothers. The Lord picked us as a peculiar treasure. Peculiar means you ain't going to find nobody mm -hmm. on the face of this earth like Israel. Come on. But we have made our God to shame because we out here doing everything under the sun and have no consideration of the God that created us. And they will not have consideration tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you go out that door right now on the Sabbath day, on the day that the Lord created for you, they ain't going to have no consideration for what the Lord is doing. They're going to be out there doing their own thing, each and everybody else. Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. But after the spirit, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. And we're going to tell you what this law is. This law that is talking about is animal sacrifice, the law of animal sacrifice. Keep going, brother. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. Yes. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. See, the problem with the law of animal sacrifice, there really was no problem in the law. The problem was with the people. Right. Israel always found, because the laws, the, the book in Psalms says the laws of the Lord are perfect. Yes, they are. Teaching the wise is simple. So the law has always been perfect. Mm -hmm. But Israel, we have always found a way to get from underneath the law. Yes, sir. See, that's the problem. You give Israel any occasion, they're going to find a way to get around the law. Now they say we're not under the law, we're under grace. Right. Well, I say if you're abiding in sin, hiding behind grace, you got issues. You just hiding your sins behind the word grace. Come on now. When you move that word grace out the way, your sins are right there. Teach well. Paul says, shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God, God forbid. forbid. Right? So you're going to justify you being wicked. Because you got the word grace. You just got the word. Right. You ain't even got the action of grace. You just got the word. And you said, you know what? Because uh, the Lord came and died for us, mm -hmm. uh, I can continue to do what I want to because we're not under the law. That's what we are say. under grace. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? You're going to be under grace in that fire. <laughs> and by the grace of God, you're not going to be consumed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell them that. Real. Tell them Brother Will said that. Keep Teach going, real. brother. Let's get down to five. Go ahead. Skip down to verse 5. Go ahead, brother. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. So as long as you walk after this flesh, this flesh is going to pull you back, and then you're going to do the things of this flesh because you're not strong enough in God to mind the things God wants you to do. You're stronger in your flesh, which is nothing at all. And that flesh is going to wake you up, boy, and tell you to do something. It's gonna, that's how we get those spirits, those demons, those afflictions we have. Some are, are addicted to drugs. Some are addicted to sex. Some, some people are addicted to a lot of things. And that's all in the flesh. That's because your flesh is weak and it's telling you to do those things. But if you mortify those deeds, then you can be stronger in God. Come on, y'all. Let, let God come forth about out of us. Go ahead, brother. Middle of five. Yes. But they that are after the spirit. Yes. The things of the spirit. Yes. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Carnally minded means you seek pleasure more than righteousness. It's means fleshly minded. Being carnal minded is Fleshly minded. You're seeking more of your pleasures than you're seeking the word of God. Mm -hmm. He said, that is death. As long as you're seeking your will, you cannot do God's will. Right? You can't do your will and God's will at the same time, can no you? No match. Can you serve two masters? No, sir. I'm just here to, I'm just here just to show y'all that. Go ahead, brother. Seven. Yeah. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Boy, enmity. But that's a, that's a real word right there. And I want y'all to look that up. Enmity means against, to oppose, opposition. The carnal mind opposes God, everything God's about. And uh, there's one person I know that opposes God. That was Satan the devil. Yes, he did. So maybe you owe your father Satan the devil. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. He killed the whole creation. So if you're doing the deeds of the devil, you are of your father the devil. Because you are opposing God, just like that little horn. Mm -hmm. That little horn that's going to come up, opposes everything that's against God. Maybe you after that order, the real Christian order of the Sunday churches, the churches they say the real Christians are. But we know we are the real Christians because we're doing the will of the Lord. Yes, sir. We are trying to be Christ-like because we're going to walk in his commandments, right? Go ahead, brother. Miller 7. Yeah. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. As long as you walk in his flesh, 
you are not a legalist. You, you are not. You cannot walk in the laws of God. You are an illegalist. You are illegal as long as you walk in his flesh. The law was, you only under the law, sisters and brothers, when you break it. When you break it. Now, that's how the laws are made. Right. The law only affects you when you break the law. If you are keeping the law, then you are okay. You are, you are a friend of God. Mm -hmm. But as long as you break that law, now you have transgressed against his law. Now you are his enemy. If you read Psalms, it said, he said in Psalms, in uh, I think it's the 82nd chapter, he said in their affliction, he was afflicted. Mm -hmm. So when Israel was afflicted, the Lord was afflicted too. He said the angel of his presence came and saved them. Right? But he said they were rebelled against my Holy Spirit, and he became their enemy. So sometimes when you're fighting, you can be fighting against the Lord. Not only the evil spirit, but you can be fighting against the Lord because the Lord is trying to get you into correction. The Lord is saying, Brother Steve, change. But you don't want to change, so you're fighting against him. So he's going to become your enemy. Teach and that's what's called reprobate. When the Lord rejects you and he becomes your enemy, you're in real trouble. Mm -hmm. You are in real trouble. Go ahead, Brother. Keep reading. Hey, so then they that, excuse me, so then they that are in the flesh... Cannot yes. please God. Cannot please God, right? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Yes. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you don't got the spirit of God in you, then I say earlier, you are of Satan the devil. You are not none of his. The Lord is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit. In spirit and in truth, right? That's right. So that's the only way you can attach yourself to God is if you are in the spirit. As long as you're in this flesh, you are an enemy of God's. And when I say enemy, you are a real enemy. Because only an enemy will throw you in a fire. A real friend will not throw you in a fire. Only if you are opposing me. If I got problems with you, I'm going I'm to I'm destroy you. And that's what the fire is there to destroy you, but you're not going to be burned up. And that's what they feel. They, you know, the average church, they just think that this is going to be only for a season. Because they knew it was going to be forever, forever, ever. <laughs> they would change, right? <laughs> They would get themselves together right now, right? Yes, they would. They wouldn't be out there doing they will. They would say, you know what, let me consider what the will of the Lord is, because I don't want to be in that. I don't. I'm telling y'all right now, Brother Will does not want to be in that fire forever. I don't want to go in the fire, period. I don't even want to see the fire, mm -hmm. lest I be consumed. Mm -hmm. Man, go ahead, brother. Keep reading. Ten. Yes. And if Christ be in you, yes. the body is dead because of sin. Yes. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Because of righteousness. Go ahead. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. And who is that from spirit? The dead, who is that spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead? That's the Father, right? Yes, sir. The Father raised Jesus up from the dead. So you got to have the spirit of the Father. Isaiah 57 say, said the high and lofty one who have an attorney whose name is holy. I dwell with him of a humble and contrite spirit. That's that spirit. That spirit of the Father is not puffed up. That spirit of the Father does not envy. He's not a liar. He's not full of lasciviousness. Mm -hmm. He's not an adulterer. That's the spirit of the Father. Mm -hmm. He's not jealous. He does not have emulations. He has no hatred. He's all about love. Because I tell everybody, that got to be a powerful spirit on the Father. Because when Jesus was in the grave, he could have been the only God. But Jesus said, suffer not your holy one to see you in corruption. And he kept that promise he kept with Jesus. He raised him up out the grave. Yes, he did. He raised him up. He could have been saying, hey, I just want to be God by myself. I don't want to raise, I don't want to raise him back up. But that's not how the Father operates. No, it's not. The Father stands on his word. And we got to stand on our word too, sisters and brothers. And we're going to join ourselves together with the Father, with the Spirit to raise the only be gotten up from the, from the grave. Go ahead, brother. Middle of 11. Yes, keep reading. From the dead dwell in you. He yes. that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies yes. by a spirit that dwelleth in you. Yes. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Yes. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. You but shall do what? Die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. Mortify means to kill. Every day, this old man got to die. You got to kill him. Now, I ain't talking about physically. I don't want none of y'all be calling me. I don't want no police stations to be calling me. No hospitals calling me saying you tried to commit suicide because Brother Will said mortify yourself. Right. So let's get that straight. But you got to mortify your spiritual self. Mm -hmm. And you got to cut out 
You got to go in there with a knife and you got to chisel out all that wickedness. Yes, sir. And you got to cut it out. Just like the book says, if your arm offends you, cut it off. If you can't stop stealing, it's better to lose an arm than your whole body. Yes, it is. Because let me tell you something. The book says we are all one body of Christ, right? But let me, t- let me show you one thing. Just like your body, when your body gets grain green and something is destroying part of the body, you got to cut that part off. The Lord is going to cut people out to save the body. Yes, he will. Everybody's not going to make it. He's going to cut off parts just to save the whole body. And that's what you have to do with yourself. you got to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Go ahead. Ye shall live. Yes, you shall live. Let's go to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Y'all with me? All right now. Galatians, the fifth chapter. We're going to pick it up 19 because the Lord said mortify it. We've got we to cut these out. So we've got to figure out what, what these are. What's the deeds of the flesh? Because somebody here don't know. They like, man, they justify doing what they continue to be. They justify and continue to doing what they've been doing. Because they maybe they really don't know what the deeds of the flesh are. Maybe they don't know what they got to stop doing. Because before I read this book, I didn't know what I needed to stop doing. Right. This is the rod of correction, this holy Bible. It's a two-edged sword. It'll beat you up, and it'll beat the other person I'll be talking to. Yes, and right now, I'm getting beat down, just like y'all are. And it's, it's all to the glory of the Father. So we can reign with him and his son. That's a promise he gave you. If you overcome, I will give you to sit on my throne. But where else you want to sit on this earth? Where else would you want to be that would sit on the throne with Jesus? If that ain't where you want to be, you can get, up and get out of here right now. I'm just being real with you because you, you, you're doing it in vain. You're wasting your time. If you ain't trying to serve with Christ, you can leave right now. That's what, that's what it's about. Because all all, everything you're doing is going to come to naught. Mm-hmm. Nothing at all. It's all about vanity if you're just sitting here because you want to come hang out, because you got friends to go here, because you think it's cool just to come here. Right. Maybe you want to suck up the air conditioning and heat. I'm just saying. <laughs> vanity, vanity, all is vanity, yes, says the preacher. Is. But if you are not here because you want to be God, come on. then you're here for the wrong reason. Teach we might as well depart and just do what you want to do anyway on the Sabbath day, because you're still going to get the same reward yes, with the will. evil. Go ahead, brother. Let's go. Galatians the fifth. Chapter, I'm going to get in trouble. Boo, you might call me on this one. 19. <laughs> I love the brother, though. Galatians 5 and 19. Go ahead, brother. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which yes. are these. Adultery. Adultery. Fornication. Fornication. Uncleanness. Yes. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Anybody know what that means? That means excessive lust. Yeah. Over and beyond regular lust. Well, you just cannot stop lusting. You see everything you see you want. Mm-hmm. Everything you see. You can drive down the street, but I want that too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's what got Satan in trouble, sisters and brothers. Yes, it is. If you read Ezekiel 28, it said about a multitude of his merchandise. The, beauty, yep. the book said he was wiser than Daniel. Mm-hmm. But he didn't use his wisdom to serve the Lord. He used his wisdom to gain more prosperity. Right. He used his wisdom to gain more gold, more silver, and add more beautiful stones onto his body he was already arrayed in. But the Lord said, I created you perfect. How more, how more perfect can you be than perfect? Right. But he said, you know what? But now iniquity has been found in you. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. That's over excessive lust. We got to stop that. Because mm-hmm. the body wants everything the body shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. The body wants your husband, your his wife. The body wants his, the, your body wants his money in his pocket. Teach well. And you can be over here talking to a brother in class, digging in the brother's pocket. Because <laughs> you want it. Right. But you got to mortify those deeds. You got to stop that. Yeah. The Lord has given everybody everything they need. Yes, he has to make it into his kingdom. He has given you your own wife, her own husband, you your own money, and if he has it, whatever you ask for in my name, I shall give to you. Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. 20. Yes. Idolatry. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Yes. Hatred. Variance. Boy, let's talk about hatred. That's the real thing that's going on right here in this world today, hatred. People hate just because now. They don't even need a reason to hate. They be on social media just hating just because they can hate. And that's what I tell everybody. We are living in a world of non-reality. You can be anything you want to on social media. Yes, you can. You can even have a filter. You can hide behind social media. And that's why this world is living, it's, it's, we living in a fake world. It's not realistic. 
But once you come meet that person face to face, you're like, man, who are you? <laughs> but you don't want the Lord to say that to you. Because no, the Lord not. said, I said, I, don't even, I never knew you. Yeah. I never knew you. Depart from me, workers of, of iniquity. Yeah. You don't want the Lord to walk up on you when you get over there and you say, I don't know you. Right. Let me, like, wait, let me open this book. Uh, Brother Steve, nope. Don't, I don't know, I don't got no, no Steve in here. Example. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, brother, keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord in Jesus' name, right? Keep Miller, reading, brother. Miller Keep 20. reading. Yes, sir. Tribulations, wrath, yes. strife, seditions, yes. seditions, heresies, heresies. envy. Heresies murder. mean not to have true facts. Heresies. Things that people just say to you about this word of God. Heresies. That's heresy. That's heresy. You know, you used to tell your boy, man, that's hearsay, man. That wasn't me. Yep. That ain't real. That's all say facts. Right? That's not true. And half the doctrine that they say in a Sunday church is hearsay. That's not even factual data. And they ain't even reading out no book. How are you going to sit there and ain't even reading out no book? The man got the book closed, and he's just talking to you. You know, I'd be, I'd be peeping and be like, man, what's that man reading out of? <laughs> His book closed. How could you get anything out of a closed book? And did your mother tell you a closed mouth can't get fed? Mm -hmm. well, a closed that. mouth cannot get fed. Right. Open up your understanding, sister. Let's go keep reading. 21. Yep. Uh, Envyings, yep. murders, yep. drunkenness. Drunkenness. Revenants. Let's talk about drunkenness. Because we got some people that need to be talking about drunkenness. That's over excessive drinking. Drunkenness. And we got people right now, you probably passed a couple of drunkenness people on your way to class today that was on the street. They need help. Yeah. Their condition needs to be addressed. Just like our condition needs to be addressed. So if you have an over excessive drinking problem, sister, brother, you got to cut it out. Mm -hmm. Drunkenness. That means you're always drunk. You always turn up. That's what the young folks say. I got to say that because, hey, I got to throw a couple of words in for y'all, too. They be turned up, but they not turned up in the truth. They turn up in their own lust. Man, don't be consumed in your lust. That's the worst thing to do. Go ahead, brother. Keep and reading. And such like, yes. which I tell you before, yes. as I've also told you in yes. time past, that they which do such things yes. shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Shall. Shall is a word that's a surety. That don't mean maybe, maybe I might let a couple of sneak past. Shell means you will not. So if you see yourself in any of these that we just read, you need to get it straight. Because you shall not inherit the kingdom of God if you don't cut these things out. So if you are constant adulterer, drinker, fornicator, fornicator means uh, relations without commitment. So those that don't know, you doing some things that you shouldn't be doing without committing to it, without putting a ring on her finger. If you like it, put a ring on it. <laughs> Let's go to 1 John 2. Right? 1 John 2. I'm just, hey, I, I say stuff, Brother Will say stuff, and I can reach everybody. Because someone in there need to hear that. If you like it, put a ring on it. If you like the sister, marry the sister. <laughs> if you like the brother, tell him to marry you. Bottom line, huh? Don't be the free cow. I mean, I'm just saying, why buy a cow when you get the milk for free, right? Don't be the free cow. Have some commitments. I was, hey, I talk to my kids like this too. So Moses, maybe he should have talked to the, maybe he should have talked to the children of Israel like this. I tell them the word, the book says, "Spare the rod, spoil the child." I'm telling you. Maybe Moses should have took his belt off and whooped a couple of them. Maybe we wouldn't be in a predicament we're in right now. Come on now. I'm just being honest. The book says Moses was the meekest man on the earth. Maybe sometimes you could be too nice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to go up inside a couple people's heads to tell them, hey, now, now, think. Now, OK. After pain comes knowledge. Because now you got to say, hey, I got to avoid whatever he did just hit me a few minutes ago. I got to avoid that. 1 John 2 and 16. 1 John 2 and 16. Y'all probably didn't think I was like this on the bomb of Gilead. But, you know, all glory to the Lord. Yes, sir. But a little knowledge he has given me. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. First John 2 and 16. And we're going to talk about everything that's in the world, sister and brother. Because we just was talking about the world. And the world, we all need to mortify those deeds. Let's talk about 1 John 2 and 16, brother. Go ahead. For all that is in the world. Yes. The lust of the flesh. Lust of the, the flesh is first. Because that controls everything that you're about is this flesh. And when you lust after everything that you're about, when you lust in this flesh, you're going to die by the lust in this flesh unless you cut it out. Go ahead. And the lust of the eyes. Man, 
everything we see, we want to move on. Mm -hmm. Your next door neighbor get a brand new car. Now you want to lust and get a brand new car too. You can't even afford the car you paying for right now in your driveway. <laughs> but you want to upgrade. Come on now. Be content. Books say content. Food and raiment. Yes, sir. Content does not mean necessarily gain. I mean, uh, without content does not mean necessarily gain. But we're talking about godly content, sister and brother, godly gain. Let the Lord bless you. Don't move before the Lord. Don't drive that car around a horse. You done took off and drove the car around a horse. Now who's going to pull you? Who you being led by now, Mr. Wise Guy? Now by the Lord. Wait on the Lord, sisters and brothers. Anything you need, he will provide for you. Wait on him. Don't lust after it. Pray for it. That's the difference. You ain't got to lust. You can pray, and the Lord will give you. Teach will. Go ahead, brother. And the pride of life. Man, pride. Is not of the Father. That is not of the Father. But it's of the world. It's of the world that got so much pride right now. Everybody out there is so proud. They so proud. You roll up on the guys in the corner, they just so proud of their condition. Man, we doing it. You're right. We doing it around her. That's what they say. Is that what they say? <laughs> That's what they say, right? Yes, we doing it. But they... They ain't addressed a real condition. Man, you move all that out of the way, you're in trouble. Yes, you are. Brother, you move all that stuff that you have lusted for and gained through your merchandising, like Satan the devil, you're in trouble. Because all they have is physical stuff. They don't have nothing up here. You sit down and you really talk to the youth. They are in trouble. And like Lauren Hill said, our condition really needs to be addressed. Because mm -hmm. we are in real trouble out there, y'all. Our kids, our children are in real trouble. God, praise the Lord for the children in here. Yes, sir. That we are bringing them and teaching them some knowledge. Because the children out there are in trouble. And they don't know which way they're going. They don't know if they're going up. They don't know if they're going down. One day they're happy. One day they're they mad. One day they're upset for no reason. The books say, our sons are on the head of the, out of the corner. They're raging bulls. Like caught in the net. They're mad. They don't even have respect for the elderly no more. Back in the day when I was coming up, an older lady passed by, you would drop your head and say, good afternoon, good morning, ma'am. Yes, and let her pass before you went back doing your folly. Right. You wouldn't do it in front of her. No, now you'd be all, oh, man, that ain't, I ain't care about that old lady. <laughs> when I was coming up, you would, get off, you would get up your seat off the train for an older lady yes, we or an older man That's what we and say, do. sir, would you like to sit down? Yep. Now they be sitting there looking at that man. <laughs> let, him, let him lean on his cane. Right. That's what he got it for. Right. But I'm serious. That's how, that's how our youth think, sister and brothers. Keep reading, brother. 17. Man, go ahead. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. The world yeah. is going to pass away. Ecclesiastes 9 say that. All this is going to go to the, gra the grave where you're going. All your hatred is going to the grave. All your love, all your knowledge, even knowledge is going to go, go to the grave. But your charity is always going to be there because your charity is your work. When the Lord raised you back up, he's going to open up that book, and it's going to talk about your work, Teach not me. about your talk. The walkers in the world, the only one the Father will forgive. Only the walkers in the word. Go ahead, brother. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Man, he that doeth the will of the Father and the Son, you're going to abide forever, even in the Father's kingdom. But you ain't going to get in that kingdom just doing your will. Can't oh, you're going to be in there. But I ain't want to tell you what your condition is going to be. It's going to be even worse than it is right now. It's going to be the lake of fire. Right. Because everybody's going to the Lord's kingdom. You're going to get in there. When that, now, whether you want to be fueled for the fire or whether you want to be watching the fire, I just want to watch. I just want to look over in there and say, thank God that I didn't make it in there. I don't want to be in there because it's going to be a great golf fix. You ain't going to be able to get up out of it. You ain't going to be able to call time out. Maybe, maybe email your mom. Mom, come get me. You ain't going to be able to do none of that. Can't save you. Ain't no asbestos suits. Mm -hmm. you, you can't save you. This is. It might be funny, maybe making jokes of it, but this is real serious yes, stuff. Yes, it is. I'm trying to scare you so that you'd be like, man, brother, I don't want to go to that fire. I mean, just, I mean, I, I, I got a mosquito bit me the other day, and I don't like nothing biting on me. And a book says it's going to be gnashing of teeth. There's going to be people biting on you because of their condition. They in so much pain, they try to take it out on you. They be biting one another. Just think about that hurricane, that the, the, uh, volcano is taking place in uh, Hawaii right now. Still going, right? Yeah. Go stick your foot in that. Then come back and talk to me next week. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Matthew, the 10th chapter. For real, go stick your foot, because that's, that's brimstone. Mm -hmm. 
It's burning with brimstone. Right. That's the rocks. Is mel- the fire is so hot it's melting the rocks. That's right. Just think about what it's going to do to your flesh. But you ain't going to be flesh. You're going to be spirit. You can't burn up. But it's going to be some kind of spirit, condi- uh, physical condition to you where you can't. You're going to feel it, though. You're going to be able to feel that. It ain't like you're just going to be in the fire asleep chilling, having a conversation with, with, with your boy. Hey, man, so you know what I was thinking, man? No, you're going to be in pain. Man, I don't want that type of pain. Do y'all want that? No. Man, let us change. Man, Matthew 10. Matthew 10 and 16. Matthew 10 and 16. Praise the Lord for his knowledge and his grace. His grace is sufficient, sisters and brothers. Just his grace. Man. Whew. The place his brother Will should be in right now. But by his grace, he has allowed me to stand here before you and teach. Because Lord knows I, I shouldn't be right here. I'm telling you. The amount of stuff that I've did. Because I look back, I look back, back at my life right now, and I'd be like, Brother Will, you was tripping. Mm-hmm. You was really tripping. We all were. I was saying, boy, the Lord, the Lord had great mercy on you, the places he brought you from. Because I should have been dead a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Matthew 26 and 41. Matthew 26 and 41. Now y'all teaching my lesson. Matthew 10 and 16. <laughs> y'all supposed to have just went ready and let me know I was wrong after we read it. Matthew, Matthew 10 and 16. I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me, sisters and brothers. We all flesh. Let no man think that we are above one another. Right. Matthew 10 and 16. We all got to humble ourselves just a little bit. Go yeah. ahead, brother. Behold, yes. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. The Lord is sending you out every day in this world as sheep. In the midst of wolves, sisters and brothers. And you see how the Lord has kept you from Sabbath to Sabbath. Mm-hmm. But there's some wolves out there. Wait. And they're ready to devalue. But we ain't talking about just wolves. We're talking about the wolf, mm-hmm. Satan the devil. Right. He want to sift you. And I ain't talking about no regular sift. I'm talking about you take a straw and stick it in the Coca-Cola and <laughs> one swallow, you gone. Mm-hmm. That's how he wants to sift you. That's how hard the Satan wants to sift you, especially those who are in this faith. Yep. He's trying to pull. If you look around, he's trying to pull each and every one of us out. That's why I say if you see somebody missing, call them yep. and see what's going on and bring them back in. Teach well. Sometimes you got to leave that pack just to call that one and say, hey, man, come back in. Whatever you're going into ain't better than this right here. Mm-hmm. Whatever you're looking into, them lost books, they ain't lost because you got it. Come on. Come on. Let's go, brother. Keep reading. Uh, end of 16. Be therefore wise as serpents yes. and harmless as doves. You got to be wise as serpents, but you got to be harmless. And we got to be wise as the serpent, say the devil. It said by his subtlety, mm-hmm. his subtle act, he deceived Eve. Because he was so crafty, but he, had, he was wise. Smooth. He was mm-hmm. wise. You notice he didn't jump on Eve to her husband walked away. Right. He didn't jump on her while the husband was there. Because mm-hmm. that's, that's crafty. And we be doing the same crafty stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, you might see a brother walk away from his wife. Now you want to go, go talk to him. Hey, sister, how you doing? Mm-hmm. That's crafty. Why you didn't walk up on the sister, the sister while her husband was standing right there? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, I'm just being real. Let's be honest with each other, right? Man, go ahead, brother. That's it? That's it. So be wise as serpents. I send you out. Let's go to uh, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. We got to be wise, sisters and brothers. With all our wisdom, we got to get some understanding about how wise we are. Matthew 6 and 11. You could be real wise, but you might not understand what... The amount of your wisdom, what is what is doing for you? You can know everything, no prophecy. Just because you know it, don't mean you understand it. Like those Sunday preachers, they know this Bible, but they don't understand it because the Lord has not opened up their eyes too. Because they haven't humbled themselves, and they haven't asked the Lord. Man, Ephesians six and eleven. Let's go. Put on the whole armor of God. So when I send you out in this world. Full of wool, you got to gird yourself up. You got to put on the whole armor of God. Go ahead. I ain't talking about just a shirt that say armor. I'm talking about you got to put all, I'm talking about the word of God. So don't go home in your closet looking for your armor gear. <laughs> this is talking about the word of God, sisters and brothers. Right. Put it all on. Teach well. Go ahead. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ooh, you got to stand against that devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. <laughs> against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness Wicked. in high places. See, that's what I tell sometimes. When you're arguing sometimes with some people, 
You got to look past that person and see yeah. where they're getting their power from. Where that, where that mouth is coming from. Come on now. This pro- 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 uh, professing great things. Right. What they going to do to you? You got to say, hey, you know what? That, that's not you talking. That's that evil spirit talking through you. Mm-hmm. And you got to humble yourself Jesus and just will. walk away. You got to say, you know what? Lord, forgive them. Ain't that what Jesus said? That's what forgive he them, said. Father, for they know not. That's what he said. You got to be humble at all times. You got to be harmless. Let somebody point their finger at you and say, she, she, ain't a, she ain't a real servant. She should have never stolen on me. That brother should have never hit me. That's not a, a true servant of God. He should have never said those things back. Come on. The words he said, especially my ladies. Mm. Some of the mouths I hear out of ladies these days. Mm. Where are the virtuous women at? Virtuous women do not talk like that. No, they do not. Come on, we got to do better, y'all. And wise men don't talk like that. Out of the mouth of a wise man comes what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Not foolishness, not cursing, and, and all these words that everybody's talking about these days. We got to be about God's work, and you ain't never going to hear Jesus walk up on you and curse you out. I don't care what you've done. He always going to come with the spirit of mercy mm-hmm. and say, just come back. I forgive you. But, you know, uh, this generation, boy, you try to come with some mercy, they smack you around. Get up out of my face, brother. I don't want to hear that folly. I ain't, uh, that, that folly replaced some other words. Yeah. You know, I'm just being... Being humble. Go ahead, brother. Keep 12. Going. Yes. For we wrestle not against, or excuse me, 13. Yes. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Yes. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. With truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Preparation of the gospel of peace. Sister. Above all, yes. taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Who fought? Who fought for the children of Israel to come out of Egypt? Who did it? God. Did Moses do it? Moses got his commandment from the Lord, right? right. He didn't move before the Lord did, did he? No, sir. The Lord said, "Go tell Pharaoh." <laughs> you know, the Lord he's humble with. Go tell Pharaoh if you don't let my firstborn go, so you can come forth and worship me, I'm gonna kill his firstborn. Moses wouldn't have told him. He didn't take nothing to himself Mm -hmm. but that one time when he struck that rock. And you see what that happened when when he wound up thin, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't get into the promised land, did he? Nope. All because he spoke his own words. Get your words from the Lord. Pray to the Lord for all your understanding. Say, Lord, how should I deal with this situation? Teach well. How should I deal with this brother that's offending me? Yeah. How should I deal with this sister that's offending me? Because you might not be fighting against him. You're fighting against that spiritual weakness on high places, though evil angels. That's the book. And they're gonna come with all they got. So you gotta gird yourself up, having the faith, knowing that God can move on your behalf. Because mm. he will. Me. He'll move for you. We got to have more faith. The, the book says if you have the faith of a monster seed, you can go tell your Mount Elvis to move. I don't I, I want to go through you. I don't, I don't want to go around. I want to go through. Because he said you can have you can tell a mountain to remove itself with the faith of a monster seed. That lets me know that we ain't got no faith. Mm-hmm. Serious. It said with the faithful mustard, the mustard seed is the smallest, smallest seed, seed in the seed, seed family. family. Come on. Y'all understand what I'm saying? With just that little faith, mm-hmm. you can tell a mountain to remove itself. It with that little faith, you can say, I'm getting this job. Yep. With that little faith, you can say, I'm getting this car I've been praying for because I'm, I'm, I'm staying righteous. Teach with. I'm keeping the Lord's commandments. Yes, sir. You got to have more faith, sisters and brothers. You cannot endure to the end and get salvation without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to what? Please, God, because you're going to fall short every time leaning onto your own understanding. Go ahead, brother. 17. Yeah. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit is his word of God. This is what you fight with. This is the only way you can fight the principalities. You can rebuke them. But sometimes you got to rebuke yourself first. You know, I tell everybody always come out there rebuking Satan the devil. Amen. Sometimes you the problem. Teach Maybe will. you got to say rebuke you, Will, Teach in Jesus' will. name. Because you the problem. You got to rebuke yourself sometimes. Maybe the devil ain't the problem all the time. Sometimes it started with you. Teach Will. You the problem. When you look in the mirror, you got to say, man, I rebuke you. <laughs> in Jesus' name. I tell everybody that. I be rebuking myself and, my, and the devil in my sleep. I'll be having dreams. I wake up, I'll be like, I'll rebuke you in Jesus' name. I know that, I know that dream wasn't from the Lord. He's telling the truth. Let me stand still. Mm-hmm. We finish reading that? Let me finish 18. Oh, finish it then, Praying brother. always with all prayer and supplication in the yes. spirit 
and watching thereunto with all perseverance and yes. supplication, supplication for all saints. For all saints. Let's move on. Let's go to uh, what we at? Ephesians 6. Let's go to Matthew 26 now. Matthew 26, verse 41. We always the problem. All, the book say give no occasion. Give no occasion to the devil. See, the problem is the only way the devil can move on you if you give him occasion. All you got to do is take that first step, bow. Next thing you know, he's pushing you. All right, let's move. Let's go this way. This is what you want to do? We can do it. But you took that first step first. It all started with your thoughts. Man, Matthew 26, 41, brother. We got to move. We got to move kind of swift. I talk too much. Matthew 26, 41. Go ahead. Watch and pray. Yes. That ye enter not into temptation. Yes. That the spirit indeed, the spirit indeed is willing. The spirit but is willing. The flesh what, is weak. The spirit want to serve God. Yeah, he do. We all want to serve God, but we all get stuck by this flesh. We want to do right. You wake up every day. You want to be good. You want to do right. You say, I don't want to offend the Lord today, but sometime during the day, this flesh kicked in, mm -hmm. and it wants something. Yep. It wants something that you don't supposed to have. Come on. Then you have, you have offended the Lord because of your wants. We want to serve God, but the flesh, the, the spirit is willing. But the flesh is just so weak, y'all. But we have to build that flesh, we have to build that flesh up. But we have to just get rid of this flesh. Now I'm talking about the flesh in your mind. Because mm -hmm. this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing but, but blood and skin. That's all gonna pass away. Let's go. Let's go to uh, Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12 and 1. Read when you get there, brother. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, yes. by the mercies of God, yes. that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable mean that's not too much to ask. That's just reasonable that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Do you know, sisters and brothers, with the way the feast are in order? The Lord said he passed over your sins. Mm -hmm. I overlooked. I took a blind out of your sins. But right. when I bring you up out of here, don't bring them sins with you. Leave them sins behind. Then as you move further down the line, you got the Day of Atonement. Now you have to atone for your own sins. Mm -hmm. And if you don't atone for your sins, I cannot present you to the Father on the eighth day, holy and acceptable. It's a living sacrifice. It can't happen. That's how you have to make yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, because now you have atoned for your sins, and now you are clean. That's why the book says, whosoever does not come up to atone for his sins shall be cut off from his people. I cannot tell the Father to accept this brother if he ain't clean on the eighth day. But that's why the feast is in order like that. It's telling you right now. I overlooked your sins. Don't bring no sins out with you. Clean yourself up. I'm going to gather you all together. Then you got to atone for your sins once we've been gathered together. We got to come and say, Lord, we, we're sorry. Forgive us. Then on the eighth day, when the Father's kingdom comes down, Jesus can say, we are all in all. I am in you. Yeah, and, and you are in me, and we are all one, all in all, all in all. Then he can swear to himself to the Father, submit himself, and say, Father, these have kept your charge. Right. Now present them as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and the Father can accept you. But if you don't atone for your sins, he's not going to accept you. Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. Verse 2. Yes. And be not conformed to this world. Yes. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind means changing your mind daily. You got to change that mind. But don't be conformed to the ways of the world. You cannot be doing the same thing that those people are out there doing in the world. You cannot be turned up today and righteous on Saturday. You cannot be going to the strip club tonight, just coming from church today. You cannot do the same thing that the world does. It said don't be conformed to the ways of the world. Right. But change, renew it. So when your boys or your girls call you tonight, say, you know what, I can't go there. I, I got to do better. I got to do better by myself. I have to change. 
Because the book says, don't let the Lord catch you in your folly. Don't let him catch you somewhere you're not supposed to be at, sister. That would be the worst thing ever. Not only would it be shameful for you, but then now you're in the midst of your sin. Don't let the Lord catch you out there doing something you don't supposed to be doing. Because when he kill you in the midst of your folly. Not only are we going to mock you, because we know you don't supposed to be there. But then you, there's no, it leaves no room to repentance. No room to repent, to change. Because he will do it. Man. Go ahead, brother. Keep Number reading. Two. Yes. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you got to change so you can prove that which is good, acceptable to the Lord. What the Lord wants you to do. It ain't about self. It's about what the Lord wants you to do. Like Brother Noah would say, you always got to get rid of old self. Get old self out the way. Yeah, you do. You got to get old self out the way. Because old self is trying to kill you daily. It wake you up in the middle of the night to try to kill you. <laughs> hey, man, let's, let's get up and do this. Right. And you be on it. Mm -hmm. Seriously. That's how old self is. Sometimes self-hate is the most hate you can have. Because mm. sometimes you can just hate yourself so much you want to destroy yourself. Preach, but the Lord is trying to keep you. And you fighting against him. <clears throat> man, let's move on. Let's go to uh, 1 John 2 and 15. 1 John 2 and 15. We're going to get through this lesson. So I got to just stop talking so much. 1 John 2 and 15. Go ahead, brother. Read. Love not the world, yes. neither the things that are in the world. Yes. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So if you love that world that I told you don't be conformed to, the love of the Father is truly not in you. You cannot love the world. You cannot love the things man have and love the Lord at the same time. Keep going. Uh, finish that. It was just one. Oh, no, it's more than one verse, brother. First John. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. First, let's, let's move on. Let's move on to James, the first chapter. James, the first chapter. Can't read my own notes. James, the first chapter. James, the first chapter. Let's pick it up at verse 13. James 1 and 13. Go ahead when you get there, brother. Let no man say when he is tempted, yes. I am tempted of God. I don't want nobody ever to say, God sent me that woman. Mm -hmm. That woman from the Lord. And you married already. Oh, is that right? God sent a married man another woman. Teach well. Or God sent a married woman another man. Don't work that way. God sent you that car that you stole. Mm -hmm. You stole the car, but you said, oh, it's a blessing from the Lord. I found this $100 in the back of the church. The Lord gave it to me. No, it was not your $100. If anything, you put it in the tithe booth and give it back to the Lord. Well, you found it. Mm -hmm. Don't ever say that the Lord... It's tempting you. It's causing you to do the things that you're doing. Let's show you what's tempting you. Go ahead. For God cannot be tempted with evil. God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. Neither is he going to tempt you with any evil. God is not the tempter. The tempter is Satan the devil. But God allows him to tempt you to try your faith. Go ahead. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust and, what? and enticed. When you are drawn away by your own want and enticed. That's when you, be, you leave yourself susceptible to be tempted. That's when temptation come upon you. When you want something and know you're not supposed to have it, temptation gonna come upon you swift. And by the time, by the time it's on you, it's gonna destroy you. And you're gonna be in the midst of your folly. And by the time you get it in your mind, what have I done? It might be too late sometimes. Because right. sometimes you could be deep, brother, laid deep into some, some, some garbage, some real garbage, because everything is just, everything that's not of God is garbage. That's, that's evil. If it's, it's only two forces out here. Good and evil. That's it. Either you're of the Lord or you're of Satan the devil. Mm -hmm. It ain't no in between. No, sir. You cannot walk on the top of the fence like this. Right. Either you're going to get on this side of the fence or you're going to get on that side of the fence. Either you're right. going to serve the Lord because all those who don't serve the Lord, the Lord's going to destroy. He's going to kick you off that gate. <laughs> I'm just telling you. We're going to show you this in the lesson. But did you finish it? Go right, ahead. 15. Yes. Then when lust have conceived, yes. it bring it forth sin. It bring forth what? Sin. Go and, ahead. And sin, when it is finished, what? bring it forth death. Whenever you sin, something, something has to die. Whenever you sin, death is conceived. So when you look in people's houses, and sometimes their house catch on fire, everybody get burnt up, then it might be from the Lord. Because sin was conceived somewhere in it. 
Nothing happens by chance, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Everything happens by the will of God. Yes, sir. And sometimes it goes from generation down. It can roll down four generations and hit your great, great, great grandkids and affect them what you did last week. That's why I tell you, sin is selfish. Sin is very selfish. All it's thinking about itself. It don't think about how you the head of the house and what you're doing is now about to affect your whole house. And we're going to show you how selfish sin is. We finished that? 16. 16. Do Go not ahead. err, my beloved brother. Don't err. So when you sin, it brings forth death, right? Let's go see this. Let's go see someone who was drawn away by their own lust, and it brought forth death. Let's go to uh, 2 Samuel 13. Let's read the story about Abnon, David's son, who had a sister, Tamar. But we're going to show you this. Now, we all know that this happened to Abnon, Absalom, and the rest of David's sons because of what David did. Because David sinned against the Lord. And David said, the Lord told David he's going to drop an axe down in his household. And you're going to have killing. Absalom slept with all of David's concubines on the rooftop. All because David was drawn away by his lust too. But I'm telling you, fathers, raise your children. Because you are an example to your children. If they see a lot of lust in you, they're going to be lascivious too when they grow up. But they're going to want stuff that they shouldn't have. And now this rubbed off on Abnon. Let's go see what happened with Abnon. Let's go to uh, 2 Samuel 13. 2 Samuel 13. Let's pick it up in one. Let's read a little bit. 2 Samuel 13 and 1. Go ahead, brother. And it came to pass after this yes. that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister. He had a fair sister. She who, was nice to look at. Whose name was Tamar. Whose name was Tamar. Go and ahead. Amnon, the son of David, loved her. He loved his own sister, right? It said love. I want you to... No, take that word love, because that love is going to turn into something else. It's not going to be love no more. Go ahead. And Amnon was so vexed that he felt sick for his sister Tamar. But love is a crazy thing. You could be in so love, so lust, that you fall sick for somebody. That you got to have that which you don't supposed to have. You could be in so much love. And you ever heard the term love sick? Mm -hmm. Somebody be so in love with somebody, they become sick. They don't want to eat. They don't want to sleep. Oh, I got to talk to her. I got to call them. I got to call them. And they become sick of it. And when that person don't want you, then you got to move yourself a force against them. Let's see what he did. Let's go. For she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for Remember him. Remember that. She was a virgin. Without, she was pure. Go ahead. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Yes. But Amnon had a friend yes. whose name was Jonadab. Boy, see, we all got that one friend that encourages us to do wrong. You got to get rid of that friend. Get rid of that friend before it's too late. If you always got that one friend to tell you you can do something, you, you know in your mind you can't do it. That friend is not from God. No, sir. You call that friend up. You be calling that friend up because you only call that friend when you want to be about folly. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, check this out. This is what I want to do. You can do it, bro. <laughs> bro, you can do it. Do you have to? It's a try the spirit. Yes, it does. All the spirits ain't from God. No, they are not. And this Jonadab was definitely not, was not from God. Go ahead. Little three. Yes. The son of Shemir, David's brother. Yes. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. Man, and this, this is the only second place I've heard this word subtle. When it was talking about Satan was subtle, and now Jonadab was subtle. He was very crafty. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Yes. Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Hey, man, why are you so small? You're supposed to be eating good. Why are you looking so skinny? Why are you looking so skinny day to day? Are you not the king's son? Mm -hmm. Well, you should be, man, you should be built. You should be buff, brother. But you're looking lean. Let's go. Will thou not tell me? Tell me, and, brother. Go and ahead. And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Yes. And Jonadab said unto him, lay thee down on thy bed he and make thyself sick. how he could conjure up being with his own sister. Lay down on the bed and make yourself sick. Go ahead. And when thy father come up to see thee, yes. say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So now he's going to take advantage of his sister, his own sister. And he's going to make himself even sicker than what he was. And he's going to lay down. And he's going to ask his dad. Now, every father entrusts their son with their daughter. Mm -hmm. And I tell you this story, sisters and brothers, because I want you to evaluate your own kids. When your kids' personality starts to change, and they used to love to go over that cousin house, and now they want to go over that cousin house no more, sometimes you got to look what's going on and say, why you don't want to? You used to love going over your cousin house. Why you don't want to go over your cousin house no more? You used to beg me to go over there. Oh, I don't want to go over there. Then you have to evaluate. This is, this is food for thought. Mm -hmm. Everything. The book says all these scriptures for our admonition. 
Go ahead. Six. Yeah. So Amnon lay down yes. and made himself sick. Yes. And when the king was coming to see him, mm -hmm. Amnon said unto the king, yes. I pray thee, yes. let tomorrow my sister come mm -hmm. and make me a couple of cakes in my sight yep. that I may eat at her hand. Go and ahead. David sent home Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat. Yep. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down. Yep. And she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did break the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him. But he refused to he eat. He refused to eat, right, because he didn't care nothing about them cakes. Maybe some other cakes. I don't know yeah. what he cared about, but go ahead, brother. <laughs> Keep reading, brother. And Amnon said, have out all men from me. And they went. And they went out, every man from him. Yes. And Amnon said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. I tell all my younger sisters, when you get older, if any man tell you to bring the food in the bedroom, he don't want the food. Mm -mm. That ain't what he looking you for. You eat dinner at the dinner table. So when it happens, Brother Will said it. If a man tell you to, the only way he going to eat, if you bring the food in his bedroom, then you say, you know what? You don't want the food. I, I'm, I'm not for that. Mm -hmm. I tell my younger sisters that. Got to. This is knowledge. Go ahead. Middle of so 10. you don't put yourself in this situation that's going to take place. Go ahead. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made yes. and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. Yep. And when, she lay, and when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her. He grabbed her. And said unto her, Yes. Come lie with me, my sister. Come and lay she, with me. Go ahead. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me. Don't force this thing on me. Go For ahead. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. See, it shouldn't be done in Israel. First of all, you, shouldn't, you couldn't marry your sister. But second of all, if you did, you had to get approval from the father. And if he refused to give you his daughter, you had to work for her. Mm -hmm. And if he refused to work for her, you had to buy her. That's how the custom was in Israel. You had to pay for your wife if he refused. So, so the thing about it is, now he's going to make the situation even worse because his sister was a virgin, and now you're going to force her to do something that she don't supposed to do. Go ahead. In the so sin, last, sin ass on sin. Go ahead. Do not thou this folly, and I, whether yes. shall I cause my shame to go? You're going to cause my shame to go because once you take my virginity, ain't no man in Israel going to want me. And the book says in, in uh, I think it's Exodus, he says, do not cause thy daughters of Zion to prostitute themselves. Don't turn them into whores. Because now you have to turn your, your own flesh and blood, your own sister into a whore by doing it. Because she's supposed to get married. That's the tradition. But now because you have took her, her, her uh, you, you took her virginity, now she can't. Because I don't want her. Right? Go ahead. Top of 13. Go ahead, brother. And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, yes. speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Ask my dad. He'll give me to you. Go ahead. Howbeit, he would not hearken unto he her not voice. Hearken to her voice. But being stronger than she, yes. forced her and yes. lay with her. Yes. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. Now you see how that word in the beginning, how he was so sick, he loved her, turns to hate. Because yeah. anything you take from someone who's not willing to give to you, you, you can hate them. You see how it goes? Because you want you want everybody to surrender willfully to you. And when they don't, then you, you start having hatred towards them. Even if you ask somebody for something, you want them to give it to you. But when they say no, now you hate them. Man, I'm going to take it from him, brother. I take his money. You see these young guys on the street right now. They ask you for a dollar. You say, I don't got it, brother. Next thing you know, they're around the corner about to rob you. I just take it from this, this brother. Then they have a hatred for you when they come up on you because you wouldn't willfully give. And this is what the book say. He began to hate his sister. Mm -hmm. With how much hate, brother? Keep reading. Top of 15. Yes. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her yes. was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. He hated her more than he loved her in the beginning. And Amnon said unto her, yes. Arise, be gone. He kicked her about this. How you going to kick your own sister about like some regular sister off the street? He said, Rise, be gone. Like she was just some random person that he didn't even know. That's, that's evil. Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. Let me skip the but you, you remember how it says, Sin. Lust bring forth sin, mm -hmm. and when sin is conceived, you bring forth death. Right. Now we're going to show you what happened to what happened to Abnon. So we skipping the twenty. To twenty, brother, go ahead. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her. So you got Absalom, which is Abnon's brother. He's, he's talking to her now because every brother know their sister. Mm -hmm. Every brother know their sister. You know, all you big brothers in here, you know what something's going wrong with your little sister. Yeah, we do. And sometimes you got to approach them and, and talk to them. And find out, don't be like, oh, I'm too scared to go talk to my sister. You have to. That's your duty as a brother. Even brothers in here, brothers in Christ, 
When you see something offending your sister or brother, you got to go and approach them with the spirit of meekness. Teach me. And say, talk, because sometimes people just need somebody to talk to. Go ahead. But they, they don't want you to convict them. They just want to hear yes, what you got yes, to say. Sir. They Teach just want well. you to listen. That's why the book said, if you see your brother overtaken with a fault, you wish your spirit to restore such in a spirit of meekness. Yes, lest sir. you be tempted. Now, how do you be tempted? You say, when a man think himself to be something, when he, he is nothing, not. he deceive yourself. When you think you better than that sister or brother, Satan will come in and tell you, you ain't got to talk to them. You better than them. But that spirit of meekness says, brother, did something offend you? What's going on? Why are you not in class? Come back. Right. Did something offend you? But in the spirit of meekness. Go ahead, brother. Top of 20. Yeah. Have Amnon, thy brother, been with thee? Have your brother been with you? Go but, ahead. But hold now thy peace, my sister. Yes. He is thy brother. Yes. But God, not this thing. Yes. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Keep going. But when King, when, but when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. Her dad was mad. Go and, ahead. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, yes. neither good nor bad. Yes. For Absalom hated Amnon. So now he began to hate his own brother because of what he did to his sister. Because he had forced his sister to march. Yes. And it came to pass after two full years. How long, how long did it take? Two. We said two years, right? Mm -hmm. So hatred could last a long time. Go ahead. That Absalom had sheep shearers and Baal Hazar, yes. which is beside Ephraim. Yes. And Absalom invited all the king's sons. Yep. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, thy servant hath sheep shearers. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servants. Yes. And the king said unto Absalom, Nay, my son, yes. let us not all now go. Because he knew, don't send Abnon with these guys, because they're going to kill him. Mm -hmm. So he said, No, let us not all go. Don't all y'all go. Y'all can go, but don't take Abnon with you. Go ahead. Lest we be chargeable unto thee. Yes. And he pressed him. Yes. Howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. Mm -hmm. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with yep. us. And the king said unto him, why should he go with you? Why should he go? Why y'all want to take him now? Don't you hate your brother? He had something on his mind. Let's go. 27. 27. But Absalom pressed him. Yes. Then he let Amnon and all the king's son go with him. Yes. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine. When he get drunk. And when I say unto you, yep. smite Amnon. Kill him. Then kill him. Fear not. Have not I commanded you? Be courageous, be courageous and be valiant. Be valiant, men. When you see Abnon get drunk, kill him. Because it said, when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin brings forth death. Because he lusted so much after his sister, he sinned. And the Lord had him killed. By hand his own brother, Absalom. I'm telling you, sister, brothers, don't do it. Don't do it. And you never know when the vengeance of the Lord will come upon you. This was two years later. He forgot all about it. He forgot what he did. Let's see, you know, they smite him. Go ahead, brother. Let's get down to yeah. verse 20. Go 29. Go ahead. And the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon yes. as Absalom had commanded. Yes. Then all the king's son arose, and every man got, upon, got him upon his mule and fled. Go ahead. Verse 32. And Jonadab, the son of Shemir, David's yeah. brother, answered and said, Yes. Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's son. Now, but, they didn't kill all the young men. They didn't kill all your sons. Go ahead. For Amnon only is dead. For only is Amnon dead. So you know this came from the Lord, sisters and brothers. For by the appointment of Absalom, this has been determined from the day that he forced his sister to mark. So because the day he did that act, it was appointed for him to die by his own brother. His own brother already had in his mind, I'm going to kill my brother for what he did to his sister. So I tell you, sisters and brothers, pay close attention to your kids. This is for our admonition. When your kids' behavior starts to change, investigate what's going on. Got to. Why you don't like to hang out with your brother no more? Your stepbrother. Why you don't like to hang out with your sister no more? What's going on? How y'all become so far apart? And y'all was so close when y'all was coming up as cousins. Because maybe their cousin, sister, or brother offended them. And you, could, you had the power to fix the situation. David could have fixed it, but you don't see no way here where David tried to fix the situation. He should have did something to Absalom, to his own son. Threw him in jealousy. I say he should throw him in jail or something. But we know it came from the Lord. It came from the Lord. And he was so, he was so hurt because he knew that act came from the Lord because of what he did. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, fathers, because of what we do when we see our kids misbehaving, because we know we done so wrong, we know we know it's the Lord paying us back. And we have mercy on our kids. We be like, you know what? It's because of me, Father. I know it is. So if we do right from the beginning, we can raise our children the way they're supposed to be raised. If we are right. Let's move on. Let's go to Romans 16. Y'all getting something out of this? Yes. 
Romans 16. 16 Let us six. do, uh, Romans 6, I'm sorry. Let us do better. Let us do better. Even as servants of God, I can hear, sisters and brothers. Let us do better toward our sister and brother. Let us really love our sister and brother. Because we talk about a lot of things that are not salvation issues. We, we do a lot of lessons that are not salvation issues. It's great to know that you are Israel. It's great to know the coming of the Lord. But even if you didn't know you was Israel, you could probably stay, you could probably gain salvation as long as you keep the commandments, right? But above all things, put on charity. Charity is the greatest thing you can have. Above everything. Because charity and forgiveness is a salvation issue. The book says if you don't forgive your sister or brother, the Heavenly Father cannot forgive you. So if you hold an anger in your heart right now for your sister and brother, the Lord is waiting for you to forgive them to forgive you. So he's sitting, he's sitting like, hey, as soon as he's, she forgive his brother, I forgive him. So you're going before the Lord with all these tears, and you're asking for forgiveness and everything going wrong in your, in your life, but you ain't forgave your sister or brother. He's waiting patiently for you to forgive if you have an alt. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Let's keep going. Uh, Romans 6 and 17. That's a salvation issue, sisters and brothers. Romans 6 and 17. Go ahead. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. Yes. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Yes. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. So now that you have freed yourself from sin, sisters and brothers, now you can come forth and be the servants of righteousness. But you have to mortify all those deeds. You got to be free from sin. You cannot serve sin and righteousness. You cannot be righteous and serve sin. It just don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Go ahead. 19. I yeah. speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Yes. For as ye have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanness mm -hmm. and to iniquity, yes. unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants, to righteousness, yield unto holiness. Yield your members, servants, to righteousness and holiness. As much as we've done out there in the world, let's use more might to yield our, ourselves, our bodies, to righteousness. So we did evil with all our might. Let us, not serve, let us serve the Lord with all our might, sisters and brothers. We can do that, right? As much power as we, as we put into doing bad, let's put more power into serving the Lord. Teach with. Go ahead. 20. For yes. when ye were the servants of sin, yep. ye were free from righteousness. You was free from righteousness as long as you were serving sin. The law, you was not a victim, you was not a victim of the law. The law had no power on you because you was serving sin. Because the law only changes you. That's what the, the, the law does. It changes you. Then it has power over you because it's now it's telling you what it wants you to do. As long as you serve a sin, you ain't, you ain't subject to nobody. You ain't got to answer to nobody. That's what them guys in the street think. They don't got to answer to nobody because they serve a sin. When they change and convert, now they feel like they got somebody to answer to. Now I got to answer to God. Right. Now God going to tell me I can't go out there and do what I want to do. I can't be a killer no more. I can't steal no more. I can't just sleep around with any sister I want to no more or any brother I want to. And that's the reason so many people don't want to change. Because they don't want to be subject to any type of law. Israel hate laws. Go ahead. 21. Yep. What fruit have ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Yep. For the end of those things is death. The end of, end of sin is what, sister brothers? Death, right? Then it said you be carnally minded. It's enmity, yep. and it's death. Sin is death. Go ahead. But now being made free from sin yep. and become servants of God, servants to God, yes. you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Everlasting life is the end of righteousness. Go ahead. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is what? Death. It's death. Go ahead. But the gift of God yes. is eternal life the through Jesus Christ our eternal Lord. eternal life through Christ Jesus, sisters and brothers. Is that it? We finished that? Yes, sir. Man, let's move on. Let's go to Colossians 3. Colossians 3. Got to keep it moving. Colossians 3. The wages of sin is death. And I know we don't want to die. I know we don't want to die. I don't even want to die the first death. But I don't even, I'm not even concerned about the first death. I'm concerned about the second. I'd rather die the first death right now than to die the second death. I'll be telling the Lord, please take me before I corrupt myself. If I begin, if I start, if you think I'm going to corrupt myself, take me now while I still have a chance. Because I don't want to corrupt myself, become reprobate, then I ain't got no chance at all. I'd rather go right now. Let's go uh, Colossians 3 to 5. Go ahead. 
Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Yes. Fornication, yes. uncleanness, inordinate affection. Inordinate affection. The word inordinate affection means anything is not ordinary. Anything is not ordinary. It's not regular. It's not, it's not the normal thing. Homosexuality is inordinate affection. That's not normal. That's not what God created your members to do. He didn't create you to do that. When they say the bedroom is undefiled, he didn't create you to do certain things in the bedroom. That's inordinate. That's not normal. You cannot produce like that. Mm -hmm. So when people tell you it's normal to do that, that's inordinate affection. Teach well. Young ladies, if you're in school and your gym teacher says, sit on my lap, that's inordinate. That's not normal. Tell your parents. And say, my gym teacher, such and such, is trying to get me to sit on his lap. That's inordinate affection. If you're in a bathroom and it's cool to kiss girls and you're a female, that's inordinate affection. You have to mortify those deeds. And I tell this to all my young, teach, young ladies and brothers when I teach the, teach the children in the classroom. Just because it's cool doesn't mean it's normal. Doesn't mean the Lord would justify it. Yes, that's sir. inordinate. And you as a servant, even as a child of God, you have to mortify those things right now before they become a problem. Mm -hmm. So young ladies, it's not cool to kiss girls in the bathroom. That's inordinate affection. Go ahead. Evil concupiscence. Yes. And covetedness. Covetedness. Which is idolatry. Yes. For which things sake, wrath, excuse me, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Man. Go ahead, brother. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. We all walked in disobedience when we lived in those things. But now we got to mortify those things. We got to stop those things right now. In order for us to inherit the kingdom of God. Go ahead. But now ye also put off all these. Yes. Anger. Anger. Wrath. Malice. Yes. Blasphemy. Man, we got people that's angry. Even with your husband and wife. You're always angry with your husband and wife. You're just always angry for no reason. Your wife say something to you. You're angry. You got to put off those things. Wives too. Stop being so angry with your husband for no reason. The man come in the house from work and he speaks to you. Oh, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you got to put off those things. Anger. The woman, the woman say something to you. Take out the garbage. I don't want to take out that garbage. You're angry for no reason. <laughs> we got to even, it all starts in the household, sister, brother. Humility starts in the household. How can you teach other people when you can't even rule your own house? Teach well. How can you possibly do that? You, you're no good to nobody. You can't even rule your own house. How do you possibly think the Lord is going to give you a portion in the kingdom? It's God. And you can't even run your own house. Your house is in disarray. Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. Filthy communication Filthy out of your mouth. Filthy communication. All this cursing and stuff, we got to stop. Anything that's not of God, especially on the Sabbath day, the Lord said, do not even speak your own words on the Sabbath day. That's what he said. We can't be talking about the basketball game. We can't be talking about all this stuff we're talking about on the Sabbath day. The Lord had people killed for picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. You think he ain't going to talk about, he ain't going to kill you for what you're talking about that you did in the club yesterday on the Sabbath day? He would kill you. The Lord... Is a righteous judge, sister. Yes, he, he is. Did, he's a, and he don't change not. If he did it yesterday, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he killed people back in the day for polluting the Sabbath day, he will kill you now. And he's going to suffer. He's going to separate the wheat with the tear. And it's coming. Go ahead. Now, yep. lie not one to another, yes. seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Yes. And have put on the new man, yes. which is renewed in knowledge mm -hmm. after the image of him that created him. After the image of God who created us. Let's go to Titus 2. Titus 2. I'm just giving you food for thought. How should we walk? Keep it in 100. That's the title. Let's be honest with ourselves. Because some of us need some help. Some of us need some change. Don't we? Yes, sir. We all, every, everybody in here got some work to do, right? Yes, sir. Everybody here has sin. And whoever in here sitting here saying you're in sin, you have made God a lie. Mm -hmm. That's what the book say. Oh, Any man, man that say they have not sin, make God a lie. Because God died for your sins. So if you have no sins that he died for, he didn't die for you. Every one of us has, have fallen short of glory sometime. And we all have to come to repentance. But we got to change. You got to change before you can repent. You can't repent then talking about you're going to change. You got to change first, then ask for forgiveness. Because if you do the vice versa, you're going to go right back into the, the same thing you were doing before you change. Teach, bro. So you be, I tell everybody, when you get baptized, I heard we got a baptism going today. You got to be ready to enter into that covenant. Before you get in that water, you have to make up your mind that you have changed. Yep. You can't make up your mind that I'm, go, I'm changing. <laughs> I'm going to change. 
the water's going to make me change. The water's not going to make you change. It's going to make you wet. Your deeds are going to make you change. Yes, sir. But you've got to have change already before you enter into a covenant with him. Mm-hmm. Lest you break the covenant <laughs> and you go right back into that folly that you was doing before you got in that water and all you did was get wet. I could have just hosed you down outside. You want to get hosed down? Come outside and see me. <laughs> Titus 2. Titus 2 and 1. Go ahead. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. So he told you to put off here's the communication, right? Speak these things that become sound doctrine. You know what sound doctrine is? Something that you can go back and pick up again back in the past and pick it up and bring it back again. Mm-hmm. That's sound. The book, this is sound doctrine. Yeah, it this is. is not fables of men. Speak these things that become sound doctrine, that you can stand on top of your word when you make a promise. Go ahead. That the aged man be sober. Yes, us older men. We got to be sober. Go ahead. Grave. Grave. Temperate. Yes. Sound in faith. Sound in faith. In charity. Yes. And patience. And patience with any, everybody. Every, every older man here got to be patient with everybody in here, especially the youth, so we can be good examples to the youth. But we got to be patient with our wives because the book said when we first started out in Romans, the first chapter, so there is no condemnation mm-hmm. in you. Mm-hmm. People cannot come forth and condemn you. They saying this brother's the head of class, but he ain't got no patience with nobody. You're going to condemn him. Yes, sir. And I know this place didn't get like this because he's a bad head. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we got to humble ourselves to who God has put in authority. Yes, sir. And it's sometimes it's hard Teach to humble well. yourself, but you got to. Teach well. David said that about Saul. He said, I will not speak against the Lord's anointing, and I will not move against the Lord's anointing. When the Lord is working with somebody, you got to sit back and take the back seat mm-hmm. and humble yourself. Yes, sir. And just ride along until the ride is over with. Then he will exalt you if it's your position to be exalted. You can't just jump the Lord and take a position. Right. You see, Saul did. The Lord said he never really wanted Saul. He, they, he didn't want Israel to have a king. He gave them Saul because that's what they wanted. And Saul, Saul was one of the worst kings Israel ever had. Oh, Evil king. Mm-hmm. And, and when I read the book of Samuel, I don't hear not too much good stuff that they have to say about Saul. Saul made sacrifices when he was supposed to. Saul brought back the king when he was supposed to kill everybody. Mm-hmm. The Lord said it, 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 it repented him that he made Saul king over Israel. It repented him. Anytime the Lord said he repented himself about doing something for you, that's bad. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's bad. So don't, don't let the Lord sit in heaven talking about he repented himself that he even brought you forth. Boy, that's bad. That's reprobate. Go ahead. Three. Yes. The aged women likewise. Older ladies. Likewise, go ahead. That they be in behavior as bec- becometh holiness. Yes. Not false accusers. You can't be running around here accusing everybody. Not giving too much wine. You can't be a drunkard. Teachers of good things. You got to be a teacher of good things for you could be a good example to the younger women. That they you can't t- be running around here saying this sister did this, this sister did that. The reason the feast ain't the way it is because this sister did this, Come this on, sister Will. did that. Come on, Will. You cannot be a false accuser. You got to be a... You got to speak sound doctrine. Teach, if it doesn't brother. profit anything, if it does not change for a purpose, then it's just babbling. And you're a false accuser if you don't have something to stand on to prove that this is the reason it's happened like this. Let us not be false accusers. Go ahead. Four. Yes. That they, that they may teach the young women to be sober. Be, teach your young ladies around here to be sober, but you got to lead by example. Go ahead. To love their husbands. Man, to love their husbands. To love their children. To love their children. That's the reason the society is like this, because we got too much love and hip-hop and stuff on TV. Mm-hmm. Where they going against their husbands, they going against the men, they pointing the finger and trying to look, every man, every woman on there is pointing their finger trying to make their husband look bad. But they're not praying for their husband. You ain't seen not one sister get down on her knees and pray for her husband. Teach and well. say, Lord, heal my husband, fix my husband. Come on. And that's the reason our community the way it is. Because the younger women are too busy being false, I mean, the older women are too busy being false accusers going against their husband, not loving their husbands, and the men are too busy trying to rule over their wives and beat up on their wives. This is the reason we are in the condition we are as people. And if the book is telling you to change this stuff, go ahead. Five. Yes. To be discreet. Discreet. Chase. You know what that means? Don't put your business out in the church or nowhere else. Don't run around here talking about what your husband did at home. Be discreet. Then everybody don't need to know your business in here. What's going on with you? No, they don't. What's going on with your family? Little Johnny, he fell to fourth grade because of his daddy. Right. His daddy didn't take no time with him. You know, that's, this is how we do, though. Yeah. But don't do that stuff. Be discreet. 
if you need counsel, come to the head of the class and let him counsel you. That's what his job is, is to counsel you yes, in sir. private. Go ahead. Keepers at home. Keepers at home. You got to be a good keeper at the house, sisters. You can't be in everybody's business and you, you ain't keeping your own house. But you over there trying to fix Susie's house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you over there cooking for somebody else and you don't cook for your own husband. Mm -hmm. Come on, let us reason together. Go ahead. Obedient to their own husbands. Ooh, that's a word right there, obedient. So you wasn't Abraham's wife obedient to her husband and all things? Did she not call him call Lord? Him Lord. Yeah. Lord, right? Your husband is your intercessor to get to God. If you jump past your husband, how can you possibly go to God? You can't jump past Jesus and go to the Father. No, you cannot. Your husband is your intercessor. Preach, brother. He said the head of the, every man is God, and the head of the woman is the man. You can't go past the head. I have never, ever, ever seen the tail wag on the dog without the head. The tail cannot go. In, I've seen the dogs chase their tail because they're trying to put the tail first, but you can't. When you try to put the tail first, you go in circles. You cannot operate without your head, sisters and brothers. I have never seen a, a head, a tail operate successfully without his head. Let your husband be your head. And if he's weak in certain things, pray, for the, pray to the Lord that he strengthens him in those things. Pray for one another that we all may be healed. Go ahead, brother. Keep reading. In the five. Yes. That the word of God be not blasphemed. If you do these things, but you read these things, but you don't do them, you're a blasphemer. You're a blaspheming the word of God because you're not living what you're talking. Go ahead. Young men likewise yes. exhort to be sober-minded. Young brothers, you got to be sober-minded. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of you, good works. You know what a pattern of good works means? Every day. It's the same thing when I see this brother. Every day. He's not going to change. When I see him on the street, when it's not the Sabbath day, he ain't going to be drunk out there, turned up with somebody else's wife. That's not a pattern of good things. That's blasphemy. Pattern of good things is when no matter when I see this sister right here, she's going to be a virtuous woman. Yes, sir. And she's going to be humble. And she's going to know her place. And she's going to be subject to her husband in all things. You know, Nabal's wife, when she had a problem with him, she took it to the Lord. Yes, she did. Did she not? She didn't try to jump on him herself, did she? She said, Lord, I have a foolish husband. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. She said, this man's a fool. <laughs> Seriously, you know she sometimes did. some of us got some foolish husbands, right? Somebody here got a foolish husband, maybe. Some of you got a foolish wife. You got to take it to the Lord and say, Lord, I got a foolish husband. And let the Lord act on your behalf. And he killed that man. And he gave her a better husband. Yeah, he did. did he not? I'm just telling you, you can't move without the Lord. You got to pray to the Lord and say, listen, I got a foolish, because y'all know y'all got a foolish husband. Now you got to say, Lord, I got a foolish husband. I do, really. Help me with this situation. And either the Lord would change him, he might kill him. I don't know. But he, he will get you out that jam. Like the young folks say, when you're in a jam, the Lord will get you out. Right. I'm telling you, go to the Lord with all your problems. I tell my wife, because I'm married. I tell my wife, stay with me as long as I'm in this word. But when I depart out this word, you got all rights to just do what you have to do. Praise the Lord for me first, though. And say, restore my husband. <laughs> <laughs> you know, praise the Lord for me first. You know, go ahead, brother. In the seven. Yeah. And doctrines showing uncorruptness. Yes. Gravity. Gravity. Sincerity. Yes. Sound speech. Sound speech. That cannot be condemned. Cannot be condemned. No condemnation. The sound speech that you talk, whenever you talk it, it can't be condemned. Can't nobody come back and when you, even your boys on the street can't come and say, boy, that man preaching on Saturday, but he is, boy, that's a, that, that guy right there, boy, he's something else. Because they're going to they gonna speak words. Because I'm telling you, as soon as you try to tell your friends or family not to do something, they're going to throw it in your face what yes, you've done. Are. Every oh, time. now you Mr. Holy. Oh, but you were drunk yesterday yeah. at the family function. You were drunk. But now you want to talk about God. Ain't that how they do you? Yes, it is. That's why I say sound speech. They'd be a pattern of good work. So this word of God would not be condemned. Because when you try to bring this word to somebody else, they should not be able to condemn you in your work. Come on, y'all. Go ahead, brother. Top of eight. Yes. That, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed. Be ashamed. And no evil thing to say they of you. They ain't got nothing, to, no dirt to bring up on you. They ain't got no dirt to bring up on you. Because you got sound speech. Because you talk the same talk you talk every time, but it's the word of the Lord. Be courageous, y'all. 
Be of good courage. Speak, speak about the word of the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Skip to 11. Skip to 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. Yes. Teaching us that yes. denying ungodliness denying and ungodliness. worldly lusts, yes. we should live soberly, yes. righteously, yes. and godly in this present world. You can do it in this present world because Job was righteous in his generation. So was Noah. Didn't the book say the Lord saw righteousness in the sight of Noah? Same thing with Job. The book said he was righteous in his generation. So I know somebody in here could be righteous in this generation. Mm -hmm. We have to. We have to try. We can't be it. We got to try and get as close as we can. Right. Let us not fall short. Man, because you can't go up in there with your list of things that you've done when you get to the, to the, to the, to, to the kingdom of God. Because you got to come with a list. You got problems already. Right. You got to prove to somebody what you did. Your work should be there before you get there. When you open that book, your work should be speaking. Oh, that's Brother Will. Yep. Come on, man. Come on in. You deserve to be in here. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. 13. 13. Looking for that blessed hope yep. in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, we're looking for that hope. But we can't go there if, we, if everything we do is condemned. We can't go before the throne of the Lord, ask for mercy, and everything we do is condemned. He's going to say, depart from me. This is what I tell people. If you are 70 years old, because I did the math at the funeral. If you are 70 years old, and you die. And you take that 70 years and you divide that by 360 days in a year. Then you divide it by the hours. Most of us only live to be one hour with the Lord. Hmm. One hour. You know how easy it is for me to say, depart from me, I never knew you. If you if I, in your one hour, you didn't make your elect known? That's right. It's easy. One hour. Some, some of my teenagers are spending minutes with the Lord. Make your calling and election sure. Do some works when the Lord got to remember you. He got to. Come on, Will. He remembered Noah when the flood, when he brought them the waters on the earth. Teach, brother. The, the book says, and he remembered Noah. That's right. And Noah saved his whole house because of his righteousness. It didn't say nothing about his kids or his wife. It said because of his righteousness. Because of your righteousness, husbands and, and, and fathers, you can save your whole house. Teach, Will. Wife, by your righteousness, the Lord might be keeping your house together and not killing your foolish husband mm -hmm. by your righteousness. Go ahead, brother. 14. 14. Who gave himself for us yes. that he might redeem us from all iniquity yes. and purify unto himself a peculiar people, yes. zealous of good works. Yes. These things speak, speak. And exhort, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Yes. Let no man despise thee. Don't let no man despise you for your works. Speak these good things, a pattern of good works, sound doctrine. Rebuke that other doctrine when they bring it forth towards you. Exhort it. Tear it down. The book said you're supposed to make no league with these people. Don't go be hanging with these people that you know do it wrong. The book said burn up their altars. We're supposed to never have made no covenants with none of these people. Not even our friends. That's what a friendship is, is a covenant. You cannot make a covenant with evildoers. You can't be turned up with your evildoers tomorrow and be in a covenant with the Lord today. Don't make no league with them people, y'all. If, you, if your friend and your family is wicked, depart from them. Don't be making an agreement with them. Hey, we boys. We friends. Right. We have a friendship. A ship's supposed to take you somewhere. Right. How should we walk? Teach well. Go ahead, brother. Let's go, let's go to uh, 1 Peter 5. A ship leads you to where you're trying to go. And all our friends ain't going where we're trying to go. We're trying to get in the kingdom, and your friend bringing you down backwards. Every, every time he call you, it's for some folly, yeah. some foolishness. You got that one friend. Every time he call you, hey, man, I got some chicks. That's what they say. <laughs> That's what they say. I got these friends, but I had to cut these friends off. That's what they Come say. Come on, man, you know I'm married. Why are you calling me with some folly like that? Oh, I just, I'm, just, I'm just saying, bro, you ain't got to do it. But I'm just letting you know. I got them. That's, <laughs> That's what, what they, they say. I'm just being honest. That's why we go keep it 100, right? See, Brother Will, I don't get all that proper grammar, but I keep it real. I don't use these big words because if I don't understand them, you probably won't understand them either. And won't profit us nothing. But I know the simple. And the simple is that you got to get rid of all that. 1 Peter 5 and 9. So you, if, you, if anybody call, Bowie, just tell them. Well, he was keeping it real, though. He was, he was, <laughs> he was keeping it 100. That, that he was. He might have said some stuff we didn't, some terms we didn't agree about, like turned up and stuff like that. But it was, it was honestly what he said was real, brother Bowie. <laughs> then he didn't say, get off the phone. What are you on the phone for? Brother was 
He was speaking a book. First Peter, five, and pick it up at five, brother. Likewise, ye younger, yes. submit yourselves unto the elders. Didn't we just talk about this? We did. Young men, submit yourselves to your elders. Go ahead. Yeah, all of you be subject one to another. We all got to be subject to one another in this body of Christ. It said, every man look on the good to others more than thyself, esteem the others more than yourself. You always worry about yourself. Has anybody considered this sister who got all these five kids? But you want to talk about it, but have you seen that they eating every week? Teach well. Have you looked on the good of her while you're talking about her? Have you called her and say, sister, we know that you got five kids with five different baby daddies, but uh, are y'all good over there? Seriously, because everybody be so worried about what she got this and this. She got kids with all these baby daddies. Teach but well. are you worried about if she's okay over there? Come on now. Are her kids okay over there? That's right. If this brother is okay over here, when we always try to condemn one another, right. let, us, let us support one another, sisters and brothers. Let us be towards one another. Let us prefer one another, regardless of the mistakes that they have made in their past. Yeah. Overlook those mistakes. Mm -hmm. This sister has got herself together now. Let us make sure she's okay. And she walks constantly in his word of God. Yes, sir. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to condemn nobody. The book says the Lord, kept, he gave all judgment to the son. All judgment has been committed to the son to judge. It's not for us to sit. We ain't got no kingdom. I ain't got no kingdom to put him in yet. So the father come back. Then, he gave, then if, I, if I'm able to reign with him, now I got a kingdom. Now I can do some judging because I was sitting on them thrones. But till then, I can't. I'm going to talk about you and I got problems. Right. I'm, I'm all in your closet and I got skeletons in my closet. And I'm telling you, don't go over my house. No, I don't come over there. Don't open my closet, brother. But I'm going to be all in your closet digging. Dig in your own closet. Clean your own closet out. Go ahead. Middle of five. Yes. And be clothed with humility. For clothed God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Before pride, pride brings about what? Fall. Oh. Every proud man, before he, when he's really proud, he's up on, on his top, he's going to fall. Have some humility. Looking at every, everybody else's condition, that you ain't no better than them. You the dust beneath the Lord's feet. The Lord said he to sit on the circle of the earth and the, and, the, and the inhabitants there are like grasshoppers. You know how that is. The Lord is sitting on top of the earth. The earth is his footstool. And when he look down, you look like grasshoppers to him. He can squash you like a little bug. But his mercy tells him not to. His mercy and his grace. So you're supposed to look on everybody else like that, too. Mm -hmm. Even though you think that sister or brother's beneath you, you're supposed to have some kind of humility. Preach. Even if you do know you're in a better condition. Go ahead, brother. Six. Yes. Humble yourselves, yes. therefore, under the mighty hand of God, yes. that he may exalt you in due time. Yes. Casting all your care upon him. For he cares for he you. He really cares for you. Go ahead. Be sober. Be, be sober. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, yes. as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You got to be sober and vigilant in this word. Because as soon as you, as soon as them angels depart from you, because that book said about Saul, it said, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit troubled him. Because as soon as the Lord let them, that spirit of God, the Holy Spirit depart from you, Boy, that Satan going to jump all on you like he ain't never jumped on you before. Because he walking past you right now, and that spirit is, that spirit is on you. Yeah. He's like, okay, yeah. I'll be back. Let me go check out Brother Will over here. Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. Oh, Brother Tony ain't got that spirit on him. Uh, Whoop, it's on. Yeah. He called for the mother angels. Next thing you know, you got seven, eight legions in you. and be many. You got the spirit of alcoholism, drugs, lust. You got all these spirits overtaking you. And you know they come upon you all at once. Then you got the, the spirit of, uh, of wanting to kill yourself. Depression. Depression come on you. You know, you, 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 you can see those things. A lot of people who suffer from depression, they start drinking. Then they start turning to drugs. But they never turn to the Lord. They let those spirits overtake them because Satan's going to throw those spirits on you. And that's the thing you know, you're going to be so caught up in those spirits, he's going to devour you. Because that, that evil spirit took Saul all the way down, sisters and brothers. And it had them doing stuff against the Lord. It, sure did. See, it had them seeking wizards right. and witchcraft. Yeah. And he was the one that put them out the land. Right. <laughs> you threw them out. And let me tell you how the evil spirit is. It will condemn you. Mm -hmm. See, that evil spirit, when he brought up Samuel, that evil spirit told him, why are you bringing me up? Right. See, the Lord has rejected you. Yeah. He, the evil spirit is speaking him now. It's telling him, the Lord is through with you. Why are you bringing me up? Yeah. See, them evil spirits, they can't wait to go back to the Father and report to you. 
and say, you look, you see Brother Will, you think he's serving you, but mm-hmm. he not. He's not serving you. Look at him. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Now, whom resist steadfast in yes. faith, yes. knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. That's why I say be humble, because everything you suffer, your brother and sister in here is suffering the same affliction. Everything you fight to get from under, your brothers and sisters are suffering those same afflictions. Let us not think we better than anybody in here. Because you might, he might be a liar, he might be an adulterer. She might be a thief. She might be a murderer. She might be have lasciviousness. This sister might have hatred. This brother might be doing idolatry secretly. So let's remember. Have mercy on one another. To obtain mercy, you must have what? Mercy. You must have mercy. Let's go. We finished that? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's move on. Let's go to uh, Ephesians. Ephesians. 6 and 1. Y'all learning something? Yes, sir. Ephesians 6 and 1. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. All glory is to him. Ephesians 6 and 1. Now we're going to talk about the children. That's why I asked for some of the teens to come here today. I, I, I got something for y'all, too. I got something for everybody. You want it, you're going to have it. Because that's what the Lord sent me to do. Teach. Ephesians 6 and 1. Go ahead. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. It's right. It didn't say obey them if you think that they what the thing they're telling you is something you want to do. It's telling you no matter what they tell you, obey them, unless it's contrary to the Lord. And the crazy part about this, children don't have an age. We all somebody's children. So you got to obey your mother and father even when you're 60 years old and your mother's 80 or 95. Great point. You still brother. got to obey them. Great point. Because you're still their child. You see what I'm saying? And I'm going to show you why. Go ahead. Two. Yes. Honor thy father and mother, yes. which is the first commandment with promise. With promise, hey, because whosoever dishonored their mother and father shall surely be put to death, right? Mm-hmm. That's a promise. That's the first commandment with promise. Mm-hmm. If you don't honor your mother and father, the Lord is going to kill you. He ain't talking about the first death. He's talking about the second death. They, they gave you life, and you're going to dishonor them. It's a nice way to tell your mother and father, I don't celebrate Christmas. You don't got to dishonor them. They just dishonor their house, go tear the, throw the Christmas tree down and set the Christmas tree on fire. <laughs> I'm just saying that. You don't got to do this stuff. That's radical. You can say, Mom, I appreciate everything you've done for me, but unfortunately, I don't do that. I don't do that because my God will not allow me to do that. Because she got her beliefs and you got your beliefs. Everybody's entitled to their own beliefs. That's what they tell me. When they tell me, they told me to preach somebody's funeral. Preach their funeral, but they didn't. They believe they was going to heaven. But they wanted. They wanted another guy to preach the funeral. But the family wanted me to preach the funeral. I said, let the person in her faith preach her funeral. I don't want. I'm not gonna get up there and change what she believes. That's her faith. I don't want nobody changing what I believe. Cause me preaching her funeral ain't gonna get her to the kingdom. No, it's not. So I say, let let her. If she want her pastor to preach her funeral, that's her faith. I'm not trying to change my faith. I'm just trying to show you what the Lord, the, the true Lord of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who He really is. If you don't want to do that, stay in your faith. Maybe your God that you serve is going to bless you. Not. <laughs> Go ahead. Three. That it may be well with thee, yes. and thou mayest live long on earth. Yes, that you may live long on this earth. Did and we finish? Go ahead. Four. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Fathers. But bring them up in the nurture and ab- admonition of the Lord. Fathers, you cannot get drunk. Come home and provoke your son to wrath. Because you're going to cause your son to sin. You cannot come home. Or you cannot be on the corner selling drugs with your son, messing with his girlfriend. It's going to provoke him to wrath. He's going to be mad at you. Then he's going to lay his hands on you. Then it's going to cause him to sin. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus 21. We finished that, Steve? Yes, we did. Exodus 21. Fathers, do not provoke your, your sons to wrath. And I see it every day. Fathers always in their sons' faces, trying to bully their son. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to sit down and be teaching your son a book. Yes, you are. You don't got to get up in his face and smack on him because you're drunk or you've been drinking and you're upset and you can't take it out on nobody else, so you're going to take it out on him. Right. You can't be making your son jealous of you. you you're beating up on his mother and you don't expect him to do anything about it. You're provoking him to wrath. Any son is not going to allow anybody to lay their hands on their mother. Not even their father. Exodus. Exodus 21st chapter, 
Let's pick it up in verse 15, because you're going to cause him to sin right here. Go ahead. And he that smiteth his father yes. or his mother shall what? Shall be surely put to death. So remember that, kids. If you think it's okay to put your hands on your mother, I don't care if she's in a nursing home, and you tired of her so you can smack up on her when nobody's watching, the Lord is going to kill you. He said, whosoever shall smite their mother or father shall surely be put to death. So, fathers, if you revoke your son to wrath, and he's not, he knocks you out, the Lord's going to kill him. Because he put his hands on you, and he had, no, he had no reason to put his hands on you. And then you look in the streets, and you wonder why. You got these single mothers raising these boys. Teach well. And they at home smacking up on their mother, because they're bigger than their mother now. Then their son get gunned down the street, and they be on TV talking about my son ain't did nothing to nobody. But he's beating you up yesterday. What you talking about? He ain't doing nothing. Now the Lord had to kill him for your sake. I'm just telling you, this is, little, this is little tidbits. So when we think we got the courage to go home and smack on mom and dad, remember, brother, we are ready to you that he's going to kill you. Mm-hmm. And he's talking about the second death. That's right. He ain't talking about the first one. He might kill you the first and the second. But he's going to kill you. Man, and that, that had no age. That was a promise right there. Let's do Deuteronomy 6 chapter. This is what you're supposed to do, fathers. We're almost out of here, y'all. I know it's a lot. But we got the road with it. It's good teaching, Will. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6. This is what you're supposed to do, fathers. And I, 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 I talk like this because I'd be upset with myself, too, because I could be a better father. So I'm just not talking to you guys. So, you know, I have to spend more time with my, my boys. You know, I have to spend more time with my daughters. We all have to do this. So when I talk to you, I'm talking to myself. When I point at you, it's another finger pointing at me. Right. And it's telling me, Brother Will, be subject to what you're teaching. Go ahead. Let's go uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 1. Go ahead. Now these are the commandments, yes. the statutes, and yes. the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, yes. that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess these it. These are the commandments the Lord said he's going to teach you. Go ahead. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy yes. God, to keep all his statutes yes. and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, yes. all the days of thy life, yes. and the days may, and that thy days may be prolonged. So they, you're supposed to teach them, right? You're supposed to teach your sons and daughters. These commandments the Lord say that your days may be prolonged. Let's see when you're supposed to teach them. Verse 6. And these words, which I commanded thee this day, yes. shall be in thine heart. Yes. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Go ahead. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So when you sit in the house, and you see your son playing video games, sometimes, even while you're playing a video game, you got to talk about the Lord. When you see your son's on a basketball court with his friends, sometimes it's good to walk past and say a good, encouraging word about the Lord. Mm-hmm. And keep on moving. The Lord say, teach them when you're sitting around the house. When you pass by them, tell them the statutes of the Lord. Talk to them. Talk to your kids constantly. It said when they rise up, the first thing you, they should be doing is giving praise to the Lord when they rise about that bed. And you got to teach them that. Teach the well. Lord didn't say he's going to raise you up. That's a gift. Mm-hmm. That's some good teaching. When you breathe right now, that's the last breath that was promised to you. Everything else is by permission of the Lord. The Lord letting you breathe that next breath. And the next one after that, and the next one after that. When he takes them back, your gift is gone. Your gift is over with. Every breath is a gift. But you got to teach these to your kids. When, you, when they sit around the house, instead of always playing video games and shooting ball with them, sit down and spend an hour teaching them. Son, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. That's what the dads in the community used to do. And don't just talk to your son. Yeah, talk yeah. to whoever's in the house with him. If you invite his little son or boy, his boy over, hey, man, if your boy don't like me talking to him about this book, don't let him come over here then. Right. This is my house. Oh, come on, man. Teach Will. Right? This is my house. We got to take back our houses. Yeah. We be letting our friends, friends come in and run the house. Okay, okay, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to bother you guys. Go ahead. No. Hey, you don't like what I'm talking about? Get up. Get out. Go to your house. Finish reading, brother. Eight. Yeah. And I shall bind them for a sign upon yes. thine hand. Yes. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. These words are supposed to be everywhere you look. They should be knowing this word. And I'm glad to see y'all bringing y'all kids to the class. Yes, sir. The house of the Lord. This is teaching them. This is what they really need more than that video game, that PlayStation 6 or Xbox. That's right. Maybe next birthday, buy them a Bible. And say, here, work, work for that Xbox. Quote to me the whole book of Deuteronomy. Right. And I know it can be done because we got a brother on our crew. Do, do we not? I got a brother on my crew that sat there and read the whole book of Amos to me. 
Jude. Without reading the book. Jude. As he was driving. Book, book of Jude, right? The book, the brother read the whole book and then missed the word. I'm like, what? Verbatim. I said, man, this brother's bad. The brother, this Lord gave you a gift. So I know it could be done. So challenge your children. Challenge your children to stay in his word. Let's go to Romans, Romans 2. Romans 2. Romans 2. Romans 2. Romans 2 and 11. 2 and, and verse 11. Let's go. For there is no respect. If, if I'm moving too fast, I'm trying to get y'all out of here now. I'm, I'm moving too fast. Write the scriptures down and read them at home. I'm sorry, y'all. We got to get out of here now. Romans 2 and 11. Go ahead. For there is no respect of persons with God. God is not a respect of persons. Just because you are teaching the word, just because you in class get knowledge, and you're not at home spending time with your kids, he's going to treat you just like everybody else. Because he commands you to spend time with your kids. God is not a respecter of person. It goes from the teacher down to the student, to the student, student, down to the kids. Come on. Go ahead. Skip. We're skipping to uh, 13. Go ahead. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. It ain't the hearers. It's the doers. You could be all talk, but your walk is lacking. It's all about the doers of the word. You can talk a big talk when it's get time to box. But if you can't fight, you're going to get beat up. Bottom line. Then you're going to learn your lesson. Mm -hmm. Don't fight with him again. Next time, don't even talk. Right. <laughs> Just walk. Come on. Be a walker. <laughs> Just be a walker. Right? right? Go ahead. <laughs> For, 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, yes. these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Yes. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Yes. Their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts demean while accusing or else excusing one another. Your, your conscience is always your witness, sister, brother. When you get, a, when you get into that judgment, that your conscience is going to tell on you. You're going to be like, shut up. Don't tell them that. <laughs> but your conscience is going to keep telling the Lord what you did. And it's going to tell you, remember, Brother Will, on July 15th, 2018, how you was here? You're going to be like, why are you saying that? Right. But that's your conscience is going to play you back itself to the Lord. So you can't even have for your own conscience, sister and brothers, because before any of us got ready to do the evil we did, your conscience told you don't do it. And you had to disobey your conscience. He's like, shut up, man. We're going to do this anyway. Because he let me know that because when David got ready to do what he did with Bathsheba, they told him, mm -hmm. is that not Uriah's right. wife? Yep. So his conscience told him, like, hey, that's somebody else's wife. You shouldn't do this. But then he had to build up the courage to sin against God. See, I'm telling you, when you see it, you build up the courage to sin against God. Right. You be like, today we're going to do this. We're going to do this today. We're going to do this thing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do it. You know, you be talking to yourself. Yeah, that ain't your money, but we're going to steal it. Yeah, you shouldn't steal it, but we're going to steal it anyway. Yeah. Let's do this thing. Go ahead. 16. Yeah. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men Woo, by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Man. Behold. He going to judge your secrets off. That hatred you got for your sister, brother, your secret mind, he's going to judge that. So let it go. Let it go. Go ahead. 17. 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and the rest is in the law, and makest thou boast of God. You boasting about you being an Israelite because it's in the law, but you're making a boast. But you're not a walker in the word. So your, your title, being an Israelite, ain't profit you nothing. Nothing. Because you just a talker. You could be Israel all day. But if you're not spiritual, Israel, you are nothing. And this is what I tell my brothers. You out there preaching against salvation for the Gentiles. When Israel came out of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude. Suppose you get to the, suppose you get to judgment and find out you a Gentile. Just because you look dark skinned. Your granddaddy, granddaddy, granddaddy was a Gentile. Now you a Gentile. And you preaching no salvation for the Gentiles. Oh, mister, you got to go to the fire. <laughs> Mr. Gentile thought you was an Israelite because you're making a boast yes, sir. in the title of being a Jew. But go ahead. We're going to see what this boast 18. is about. Go and, ahead. And knoweth his will and approveth the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. 19, if you don't get nothing out of this lesson, get this. Go ahead. And art confident that thou... Are you confident? Thyself art the guide of the blind. Are you confident that you're really leading the blind? A light of them which are in darkness. Are you really a light to them that are in darkness? Go ahead. An instructor of the foolish. 
Yes. A teacher of babes. Yes. Which has the form of knowledge and of the truth you in the law. You might have a form of the knowledge of the truth, but go ahead. Thou. Therefore, which teaches another, yes. teachest thou not thyself? Are you teaching yourself when you're out there teaching everybody else? Thou that preaches a man should yes. not steal. Yes. Do thou steal? Do you really steal? When you're out there preaching, you shouldn't steal? Thou that Because you're making your boast as, a, as an Israelite. But you're secretly doing all these things that you're telling everybody not to do. Are you confident that you are a guide to the blind? Are you really walking the way you're preaching, that you, you, the way you're talking? Go ahead. That th Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, yes. doest thou commit adultery? Are you committing adultery and you standing here telling everybody don't do it? They gonna condemn you. That's, right. That's blasphemy. Go ahead. Thou that abhorrest idols. Yes. Doest thou commit sacrilege? You talking about all these idols that everybody else is worshiping? Maybe your car is your idol. Do you get up and wash your car on the Sabbath day? Teach will. Do you love your car? We, do you love yourself more than God? Do you get to church 45 minutes late because you had to look good? Because your ha. hair wasn't right? Ha. Teach well. I'm just saying. You, spill, you, spill, you, 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 you messed up your shirt when you were ironing it, so you spent another 45 minutes looking for another shirt. You should have just came and got this word. Go ahead. We finished that. We finished that? Let's go to, uh, let's go to Matthew 7. Matthew 7. I'm just saying, right? I've been late for church over trying to look good. Vanity. Yeah. My shirt got messed up. I had to turn around and get another shirt. Because right. I spilled something on the way to church. Right. You know how stupid that sounds? <laughs> I got like four blocks in the house drinking some juice and spilled something on my shirt. I had to turn around. Now I'm even later. Because now you don't even got a man what you want to wear now. Because you really put this, you really laid this outfit out the night right. before. Right. So now you got to go digging. <laughs> so now you in the closet like, now, time is going past, but you in the closet like, yeah, not that shirt ain't going to go with these pants because I got the socks that go with the belt. Right. And uh, So now you're going to be late and miss out. Now you come to class a whole hour late. Right. Now you don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> Let us do better. Let me tell you guys, God is on time for you, right? Hey. God don't say, I think I might wake Brother Will up tomorrow. Let me think about this. He say, Brother Will, get up. Yes, he do. He's on time for you. Right. You got to be on time for God. Teach Will. Matthew 7. I never seen God think about waking you up. He said, angels, wake him up. Because the day he stopped thinking about you, you have perished. Now you're taking that long rest. Man, do right by God, y'all. Because God do right by you. Don't become his enemy. Or his frenemy. I, tell you, I say that's frenemy because you be playing like you're in covenant. You be perpetrating like you're in covenant with him. But you're the only one that think you're in covenant, because God knows you're not in the covenant with him. He'd be like, dude, this guy, this guy really think he in a covenant with me? What's wrong with this guy? Matthew 7 and 1. Yes. Judge not that ye may not be judged. Don't judge other people lest ye be judged by those same things you judging them by. Go ahead. For with what judgment ye judge, yes. ye shall be judged. Yes. And with what measure ye meet, yes. it shall be measured to you again. Go ahead. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? I'm trying to look at this, brother. I'm telling him, like, you got a little speck in your eye. I got a whole beam sticking out of my eye. But I'm talking about his eye. Maybe I need to concern myself with myself. Maybe I need to fix myself. I'm over here trying to fix his brother's house and tell his brother what he should do with his wife. And my wife was running away out in the streets. This is what I'm telling you. Consider yourself. Your problem before you consider and you try to go fix everybody else's problem. Maybe if everybody fixed self, there would be less stuff going on in the streets. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Four. Yes. How would thou say to thy brother, Yes. Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye. Yes. And behold, a beam is in thine own go eye. Go ahead, verse five. Thou hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. First cast out the beam yes. out of thine own eye. Yes. And then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Man, cast out that beam out of your own eye, then you can go help somebody else. Fix your problem. 2 Corinthians 13. We're getting there, y'all. I know it's kind of long. I'm sorry about it. It's the Sabbath. What else are we going to do, bro? I, I, I talked a little too much, but we're going to get through it. 2 Corinthians 13. But y'all are definitely learning something, right? Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Go ahead. Examine yourself. Yes. Whether you be in the faith. Boy, you got to examine yourself whether you're really in this faith. Whether you really are a Christian. Look in the mirror and examine yourself. 
prove your own selves. Yes. Know ye not your own selves. Know how that, yourself. How that Jesus Christ is in you. If Jesus ye, Christ is really in you, you have to keep his law, right? Except ye be reprobates. Except ye be a reprobate. And you just be a talker and not a walker. Then you're going to be a reprobate because you done walk, you done talk and walk yourself right out the law. Teach. Examine yourself whether you really are in this faith, sisters and brothers, whether you really doing this thing. Because you could be a hypocrite. Everybody know it. They looking at you and say, brother's a hypocrite. He always talking. He talks a good talk, though. We finished that? Nope. Six. Six. Go but ahead. I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. We are not reprobates, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil. Yes. Not that we should appear approved. Yes. But that ye should not do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. Though you be a reprobate. Let's do this honest. James 1. James 1 and 21. I'm, I'm moving now. We got to get out of here. James 1 and 21. James 1. We're going to get this in. At the young folks tell you, we're going to get it in. James 1 and 21. <laughs> I like the young folks. They all right, man. They just got to do better. Got to do better. Yep, they're my peoples. James 1 and 21, because I was once young. I'm only 38. Shoot. Still young. But hey, they're my peoples. And we got to do better being guys to them. Every generation has dropped the ball before the generation. Come That's on. why that generation is worse and worse. Right. Because the generation before them dropped the ball. Go ahead, James 1 and 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness yes. and superfluity yes. of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save it's your soul. It's able to save your soul, this word. Go ahead. But be ye doers of the word. Yes. And not hearers only, deceiving your own self. You're deceiving your own self when you are hearing not a doer. You, the only person you're fooling is yourself. You ain't fooling nobody else. Go ahead. For if any be a hearer of the word yes. and not a doer, yes. he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. You know what? When you got up this morning and every morning, when you got up to go to the club, you got dressed. You beheld your natural image in the glass. You knew you was a servant of the Lord. But somehow, keep reading. 24. But he beholdeth himself. Yes. And goeth his way, yes. and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Somehow, now you're a twerker on the corner. <laughs> Somehow, now you're a killer. Somehow, you're an adulterer. You done left the club with somebody else's wife. Yeah. But you knew who you was when you looked in that mirror this morning. Right. You said to yourself, self, I'm a servant of the most high God. But somehow you let your boys influence you. Hey, man, we killers. We killers. You, you, you a video vixen on YouTube. It was even the channel. You twerking for some people that don't care nothing about you. But you was a servant of the Lord before you got on YouTube, before you got on Facebook. You was. Oh, you was a servant of the Lord. You knew who you was when you looked in the mirror. But now you forgot who you was, and you departed from your own self. When you behold that natural face, it's to stay with that face you saw in the glass through the day. Don't change. Let's go. We finished that? All right, you want me to go to eight? Yeah, go to eight. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Well, when you're double-minded, you are unstable. If you're a killer today and a servant today, tomorrow, you are unstable. Eventually, you're going to be a full-force killer. Yeah. <laughs> or an adulterer. You can't, you can't be unstable. We call people psychotic. Those people are crazy. That's what we say. We got some unstable friends. One day your friend cool with you, next minute they hate you. They bound to push you off a bridge. Then go down and try to catch you. I'm just saying, that's unstable. Unstable, sisters and brothers, that's unstable. You done threw me off the bridge, now you're running 28 flights down and trying to catch me. Because you love me now. That's unstable. The Lord said double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Don't be double-minded because you will be unstable. Serve the Lord or don't serve the Lord. That's it. Let's go to, uh, let's go to, Ma uh, what we at, brother? Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Let's go to Matthew 6. We almost out of here, y'all. I promise. Not. <laughs> Matthew 6. <laughs> I tried to restore some hope. That's the last, the book saying the last day that they're going to try to restore hope. I tried to. Matthew 6. At 23. But it's good. I can't let it go. Matthew 6 and 23. Go ahead. But if thine eye be evil, yes. thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Well, you can't have 
half a good body? If, your, if, if, if one part of your body is evil, your whole body is evil. It don't be like half of this is evil. This half of my body is good. This half going to go this part, this way, and do good stuff in this hand. This half going to do bad stuff. You either all or none. You can't be half of nothing in this world. Go ahead. You can't if, drive half a car down the street. Miller 23. Go ahead, if brother. There, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, yes. how great is that darkness? If the light in you, that little bitty light in you is darkness, are you going to see that little light? You're going to see more of the darkness because the, the darkness is going to be great. Vice versa. If it's more darkness in you, than light, same thing. You can't have a little or nothing and a lot of something else, and a little or nothing going to outshine a lot of something else. It don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Go ahead, brother. 24. Yes. No man can serve two masters, yes. for either he will hate the one yes. and love the other. Either or you're going to love sin and hate the Lord, or you're going to hate sin and love the Lord. The books say Job ensureth evil. Job hated evil. You can't love evil today and love the Lord tomorrow. That's double-minded. You unstable. So now you're going to throw you and your unstable stuff in the lake of fire. Then you're going to be stable. <laughs> That's going to fix you right there. Right. Go ahead. Or, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Yes. You cannot serve God and man. You cannot. Go, uh, let's, let's go. Let's go to Revelation 3 and 15, one verse. A lot of these one verses coming up. Revelation uh, six, Revelation 3 and 15. One verse, Revelation 3 and 15. Everybody know the book of Revelation. That should be pretty quick. Let's go. I know thy works. The Lord said, I know your works. That, excuse yes. me, that thou art neither cold nor hot. You ain't neither cold or hot. I would thou were cold or hot. I'm saying, either you should be cold or hot. That's what the Lord is saying. Just like you go into uh, Dunkin' Donuts mm -hmm. and you get a cup of hot coffee and it, it's, it's lukewarm. It's neither cold or hot. What you going to do? Read. Spit it out. <laughs> Let's see what the so Lord said. because thou art lukewarm. Yes. And neither cold nor hot. Yes. I will spew thee out of my mouth. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I wish that you was either hot or cold. Either you're going to serve me or don't serve me at all. He said, if you're not going to serve me with all you got, then don't even serve me at all. I wish that you just stay cold. Mm -hmm. Don't be a sometime fair weather servant, they call it. Come on now. Only serving the Lord when things are going your way. Then as soon as the Lord bless you, you pray to the Lord and say, get me up out this jam. Right. As soon as you're out the jam, you're back doing the foolishness that got you in the jam. Now you, you lukewarm now. Because now you pray to the Lord and ask him to get you out of that condition, and you went right back into that condition. Now he ain't going to get you out. How many times are you going to go save a friend out of a, out of a jam? Your girl call you, man, I'm over this man's house, man. He, he hitting on me. Come get me, girl. You're going to go over and rescue her the first time, right? Now, her stupid self, go back over that man's house again, and the same thing happened again. Are you going to go and get her again? Girl, I just told you, don't go back over that man's house. An hour later, she back over there, getting whooped up on again. But that's serious. That's how it works in this life, sisters and brothers. And that's not right at all. If someone is abusing you, and you keep going back, evidently you like the punishment. Same thing with walking in this word. If you keep departing this word to serve sin, Evidently, you like the sin more than you like the word. Correct? Bottom go line. ahead. Let's, let's move on. Uh, let's go to James 3. We got about three or four more after this, and we're out of here. James 3. I know it's kind of long, y'all. I'm sorry. Y'all forgive me? Okay, James 3, 3 and 11. And I use those terms. I don't mean to be harsh to anyone, sisters and brothers, but it's just the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. If you go, if your, your friend is really getting abused by a man and she, she, she asks you to help her out and she goes back, then that, the second time is on her. Same thing with the Lord. The Lord, saved you, the Lord saved you out of your situation the first time. If you go back into this folly, the books say if a man has tasted this gospel and his gospel has been so sweet and he go back and he depart out this gospel, the Lord said he, he, ain't gonna, he can't come back. You done walked in this gospel, and you know this gospel is good. And you depart to go back to do the things you were doing before you got baptized. The Lord ain't going to let you come back. So you better stay while it's yet in you to stay. 
and your foot tell you to depart, you might have to cut your foot off. Man, let's go Revelation. I mean, prob- what are we going James on? 3. James 3 and 11. Go ahead, brother. Though the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter. Can you go to a water fountain and get sweet water and bitter water? Can you go to the water fountain and get salt water and fresh water? No, sir. Can you? You can't go to the lake, the ocean, and go get fresh water out the ocean, can you? So you can't serve two masters. Whatever it's supposed to be is what it is. If it's sin, it's sin. If it's, if it's of God, it's of God. Go ahead. Can the fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries? Can you go to an apple tree and get an orange? You'll sit there and look at the apple tree like, what are you? Are you an apple tree or orange tree? Go ahead. Either a vine <laughs> figs? Yes. So can no fountain both yield salt water yes. and fresh? And fresh water. Uh, Proverbs 13 to 20. Let's move along. Let's go. Proverbs 13 to 20. We got about three short ones after this. Proverbs 13 to 20. Then we out of here. Proverbs 13 to 20. Proverbs 13 to 20. I appreciate you guys being patient with me. Proverbs 13 to 20. Go ahead, brother. One verse. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So you can't be, you cannot be hot or cold. You cannot have good friends and bad friends. Right? If you walk with a wise man, you're going to be wise. But if you walk with a foolish man, you're going to be a fool. Because that foolishness is going to rub off on you. And you're going to have you doing foolish stuff. And that's the same thing about that fountain. You cannot serve two gods. You cannot have good friends and evil friends. Because your evil friends are going to start outweighing your good friends. And they're going to pull you back in. And as much as you want to get out, you can't. Because right. your evil friend is going to tell you, hey, let's do some foolish stuff. And if you hang around them, you're going to become foolish. Let's go. Uh, Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17 and 15. This is little tidbits right here. Proverbs 17 and 15. Because you can't serve two gods. You can't be about God and be about Satan. Proverbs 17 and 15. And this is what you cannot do, sisters and brothers. Proverbs 17 and 15. Go ahead. You hang around those evil friends, but you're trying to say that you see some good in them. You, is that right? Do they see good in themselves? Right. They don't. Oh, then what good can you possibly see in them? You can make someone else change in spite of themselves. Can God make you change in spite of yourself? Can't happen. Can he save you in spite of yourself? No. Well, you cannot change your friends. Go ahead. He that justifieth the wicked, yes. he that condemneth the just, yes. even they both are abomination to the Lord. You cannot justify the wicked. Even in your own household, if you got a wicked son, you got to put him out. You got a wicked daughter, put them out. Because the Lord might burn your house down and kill you just because of your wicked son. Teach with. If you know your son is selling drugs out your house or your daughter's prostituting out your house, put them out. During the feast, a lot of leavened bread. The Lord said, get all leaven out your house. Because a little leaven leaveth the lump. The whole lump. So you spend all this time cleaning this leaven out your house, all the bread, all the crackers. Maybe you the leaven that needs to be put out your house. Maybe your daughter or your son is that leaven that is leavening the lump. Come on. Put them out if they ever of age to stand on their own. Tell them, sorry, son, sorry, daughter, you have to go. You are corrupt in my house. You're not keeping the Sabbath day. You're selling drugs in my house. You're bringing all this evil upon my house. And the Lord, because I'm trying to justify the wicked, because I'm trying to say, I can't put my son out because this is my son. He's, he's a good boy. Right. He's a good boy. And your friends are telling you, girl, put him out. Mm-hmm. Put that boy up out of there. But you're saying he's good. You're justifying the wicked. Go ahead. Let me go to 13. We're going to 13. Whoso rewardeth evil for good, yes. evil shall not depart from his house. You're going to give your kid a gift, and he ain't did nothing you asked. But on Mother's Day, or on Mother's Day, your kids bring you a gift. But your, your son ain't did nothing you asked him to do. Do you care about that gift? The book says obedience is better than sacrifice. Don't give me that gift. Do what I tell you to do. Right. I don't want your gifts. I just want your obedience. Same thing. You rewarding your children or you rewarding some of your friends. You rewarding your husband or wife and they're evil. You rewarding anybody and they're evil. The Lord is not going to reward, reward you if you're evil. Now, Willie, can you possibly take your evil self and get into the righteous kingdom? No, sir. No, sir. The Lord is not going to do it. Uh, let's go to Saint 1 John. We got two more after this one. 1 John 1. In verse 5, 
I know we running short on time, y'all. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to keep apologizing until we get finished. <laughs> First John 1, 5, 5. Go ahead, brother. This then is the message which we have heard of him yes. and declare unto you yes. that God is light yes. and in him is no darkness there at all. There is no darkness in the Lord. The Lord is all about right, light and righteousness. You're not going to find any darkness in the Lord. Go ahead. If we say that we have fellowship with him. If we say we are fellowship with God and we are servants of God and we truly are in a relationship with God, go ahead. And walk in darkness. And you walk in darkness. We lie and do not know the truth. You're a liar. You're a liar and you don't know the truth. You don't know that you really are fellowshipping with the devil. But if you're we not fellowshipping with him. Go ahead. But if we walk in the light, yes. as he is in the light, light, we have fellowship one with another. Yes. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Yes, go ahead. If we say that we have no sin, yes. we deceive ourselves. You are deceiving yourself. And the truth is not the in us. The truth is not in you. Go ahead. If we confess our sins, yes. he is faithful. Do you and understand this? If we just confess our sins, the Lord said, my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and change their ways. Then I will hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. All the Lord wants you, he said, a humble and contrite spirit is a sacrifice to the Lord. All he wants you to do is be broke down. So broke down, you say, Father, fix me. I need you. But as long as you pray out, the Lord cannot fix you. He cannot fix you. But when you say, Father, I've sinned against you, Fix me, I need you now. Then he will fix you. Go ahead. If we confess our sins, yes. he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins yes. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, yes. we make him a liar you and his word liar. is not in us. And his word is not in you. So when you think you're so good about yourself that you don't, you don't do no wrong, you make God a liar. And his word is not in you. Man, let's move on. Uh, Titus 1 and 16. One more after this. Two. Sorry, two, but they want verses. Titus 1 and 16. We getting there, y'all. Stop laughing. <sighs> I'm trying. I'm really trying. It's good teaching, Will. It's good teaching. Titus. I, and I promise you, every lesson like this ain't going to be long. They might be longer. <laughs> Titus, Titus 1 and 16. <laughs> Titus 1 and 16. Let's go. They profess that they know God. Yes, you profess and you know God. We all wait. Everybody profess they know God, right? Mm -hmm. But in works, they deny him. Yes. Being abominable and disobedient. Yes. And unto every good work reprobate. Every good work reprobate. Professing we know him. We in a covenant with him. We ain't sin. We good. We all right. We doing good for ourselves. Right? That's what they always saying. You guys, you going to Sunday church, how y'all doing? We is good. We blessed and highly favored. Yes. We, we love the Lord. We heard his cry. He heard our cry. The Lord know us. What did he say? He say they profess that they know God, but in their works, they deny him being abominable because they still eating that pork and, and catfish. They frying it in church on Sunday. Now you done brought it into the Lord's house. Right. Professor, you know him, though. He, you know him. But maybe you should have read Leviticus 11 chapter if you knew him. Then you wouldn't be abominable and disobedient and to every good work reprobates. I got a lesson called falling and can't get up reprobates. Reprobates. First John 2 and 1. One more after this and we're out of here. Now, now we have changed. We learned some things. We got to do some changing now. First John 2 and 1. First John, second chapter, first verse. Go ahead, brother. My little children. Yes. These things write I unto you. Yes. That ye sin not. That you don't sin. And if any man sin. Yes. We have an advocate with the Father. We got someone who's an advocate. Like you ever heard of Advocate Healthcare? Yes, sir. They supposed to be there to help you, mm -hmm. fix your problems. But that's what the Lord is. He's your advocate. He's there to help you to fix your problems. You got them. You got to call on them though. But you got to be right. You got to be about making some change. Right? You can't just call him in the midst of your wickedness. <laughs> Go ahead. Advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Yes. And he is the propitiation for our sins. Yes. And not for ours he only. He is the sacrifice. But I want my brothers that don't like the Gentiles to hear this. Not for ours only, but what? But also for the sins of the whole world. For the who? Whole world. Well, yeah, Mr. Israel that said the Gentiles can't get saved. 
Where you at? This ain't he died for the whole world. That's right? Not said. just for Israel, for the whole world. Yes, sir. He made the whole world, right? Let me tell y'all something. God, Jesus, is the best customer service rep there is. If you think you're a customer service rep. He made the creation, and he came in the flesh to fix the creation, to service it. That's the best customer service rep you can get. You made the product, and you came to fix the product yourself, the maker of the product. product. That's customer service representative at its greatest. Go ahead. Three. Yes. And hereby we do know that we know him Yes. if we keep his commandments. If we do what? If we keep his commandments. Yes. He that saith, I know him, yes. and keepeth not his commandments, yes. is a liar. You're a liar. And the truth is not in him. Yes. But whoso keepeth his word, yes. in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby now, hereby know we that are in him. Brothers and sisters, what's, what is the word salvation? What, where does the word salvation come from? Salvage, right? To recover. Now let me tell y'all something. You have to make yourself salvageable. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You got to make yourself able to be recovered. That's what salvageable is. When you go to the junkyard, you don't go to the junkyard and get the whole car. You go get the part that's salvageable. Right. The rest of the part stays in the junkyard, which is the lake of fire. Sometimes you send your car to the junkyard because it's beyond the cost of repair. Do not be beyond, beyond the cost of repair. When the Lord stopped pleading for you, when Jesus says, the Father says, you know what? It's too expensive to fix him. Let him go. Teach well. Put him in a junkyard. Mm. And he's not salvageable. He's not able to be salvaged. There is no salvation for him. Sisters and brothers, with all you're doing, make yourself salvageable so you can get salvation. Last scripture. Six verse, go ahead. Six. He that saith he abided in him yes. ought himself also to, so to walk yes. even as he walked. Even as Jesus walked. You got to bear your cross. Put it on now. If you ain't never had a cross on now, I ain't talking around your neck. I'm talking about this cross, this word of God. You got to bear it. Go, last scripture, Psalms. And when you change, this is how you can approach the throne of God. You can approach the throne of God like this, Psalms 26. Because Paul said he, he fought a good fight, right? He kept the charge. He said, I got a crown laid up, right? He didn't say, I think I got a crown laid up. He said, I got a crown laid up. That's what he said. When you live right, you can say these things. Like Job told the Lord. He said, why is this stuff happening to me? I've always been a faithful servant. He said, did he say that? I tell people, you can ask the Lord anything you want to. I'd be careful when I ask him. But, uh, hey, you got the rights. You got all the rights to inquire him about anything you want to. But just be ready for his answer. Right. Because he told Job, gird yourself up. Now I demand answer from you. Where was you at when I made you? Right. You my servant. I can do whatever I want to to you. Man, Psalm 26. Psalm 26, last scripture. We're going to get out of here. Psalm 26, pick it up in one. Go ahead, brother. Judge me, O Lord, you for I have walked in my integrity. Yes, you can say, judge me. I walked in my integrity. Go ahead. I have trusted also in the Lord. I've trusted in you. Therefore, I, I shall not slide. I will not backslide. Examine me, O Lord. Examine me. And prove me. Prove me. Try my reins. Yes. And my heart. And my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes. Yes. And I have walked in thy truth. I have walked in your truth. Go I, ahead. I have not sat with vain persons. I ain't friend of those people that are vain. Neither will I go in with dissemblers. Yes. I have hated the congregation of evildoers. I hated the evildoers. Didn't it say, get rid of all the evildoers, don't justify the wicked? I've hated the evildoers. And go will ahead. not sit with the wicked. I ain't even going to sit with the wicked. Go Let's ahead, brother. Skip down to, skip down to uh, verse 10. In whose hands is mischief. Yes. And their right hand is full of bribes. Yes. But as for me, as for me, Lord, I will walk in my integrity. I'm going to walk in my own integrity. Redeem me Redeem. and be merciful unto me. Yes. My foot standeth in an even place. Yes. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. In the congregations will I bless the Lord, sisters and brothers. And that's the end of the lesson. I thank each and every one of you guys for coming out. Great job. We have any announcements? And we have the announcements. Go ahead, brother. Uh, the Israel of God Dallas would like.